guys! Um, so today we're going to be talking um, about uh, Saturn and how to master it. So I am going to be speaking with uh, Larissa. I'm super excited about this. I'm going to be having her on here in just a moment. Um, where we're going to be going over um, pretty much just how Saturn works and how to best work with the energy. Um, and we're just going to kind of just talk about that energy because... Um, Saturn Revolution is a pretty a pretty great person in relation to Saturn. Hi, Maribel. Uh, so I am really excited to talk about this. I'm, of course, a Capricorn rising, going through my Saturn return. So we just have a lot of things to talk about here um, as it relates to Saturn. So I'm very excited about this. Let me bring her up here real quick. Um, so she just got here. Um, oh, my gosh. Why is this not working? I think. Ah, there you are. Perfect. She should be up here in a second. Um, I think so. We love Mercury retrograde moments like this that just don't want to work. <laughs> oh, there you are. Yay! Hi. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I just had a reading with someone who's reading and now I'm here. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> oh, no. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And so I just, I just yeah. got at lunch, so I'm just like, I'm just starting my day, because you're all the way over on the other end, right? Yeah, I'm in Romania. I'm from Transylvania, Romania. So it's like, yeah, it's, I think, eight or ten hours difference. I'm not sure exactly how much. Yeah, it's like eight. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's 1.30 here. So, yeah, it's like eight, an eight-hour difference. So you have, mm -hmm. you have a whole day so, from work, whereas I just, like, started. <laughs> yeah, you're fresh. <laughs> <laughs> um so well first of all thank you for coming this is super exciting just because like i obviously love saturn energy i literally have it like right there over my bed um and obviously i'm i'm a, I'm a uh, capricorn rising so like, my saturn return right now so there's a lot of things with that and i know we talked about um like just learned about how to master with Saturn. And I figured what better person than to get the person who's tagged me was literally Saturn Revolution. You know what I mean? So Yeah, true, true. So, um, yeah, same. I mean, I'm also Capricorn rising, so this is going to be fun for us. Yeah, yeah. We love yeah, it's it's really nice to have like a nice little like fraternity <laughs> thing. So so um so where's your Saturn hat? Let me ask him. Uh, my Saturn is in the third house, and it's at three degrees of Gemini, so it's all connected to communication right there. Uh, and it's in Aries. Oh wow! Okay, yay! Yeah, I love I love my Aries Saturn friends. They're great. They're super great. And you. So yours is. Go ahead. Yeah, yours is in Aquarius, right? It's like yeah. happening right now. Yeah, mine's in Aquarius. It's at one degree. It's in the technically in the first house. Um, in the second house by like whole sign. Um. So I've had to deal with how to do it, like with the Saturn return, and I'm sure be a Capricorn rising and a Saturn in Aries. I'm I, I can just imagine how you have how like personal that feels, you know. Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean the Saturn return for me has been very interesting, you know. Um, so for me, I think it's it's something that a lot of people, for those those of you that have not gone through a Saturn return. It's like a very visceral feeling. Like you have, like you actually mm -hmm. like feel it, like in a very like limiting way, like kind of like a cellular way, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, like, I don't know, it's it, it's just one of those things where like you can speculate it until you're in your Saturn return, and then it happens, and you're like, oh, that's how it feels. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, I understand. I understand. It's a really it's a really interesting process, but um, I mean, I guess being so. Well, I guess we should kind of start with just, like, what your opinion is on Saturn, how you think best to work with it, being a Saturn in Aries, um, and then I think we can kind of talk about your experience, my experience, and then um, just kind of go through the signs, I think, or the houses, I think, would be, like, a nice way of mm -hmm. doing it, or aspects to personal finance, whatever, what, what, whatever you really think, I think, would be a nice little little thing yeah i was thinking of that too actually going through the signs would be nice for everyone here like to see yeah. how that energy works yeah. um and for me like i've also i guess i've also posted posted about this but like saturn for me is just this uh point of like um uh, you really want to reach oh you you 
Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that was fine. So it's like a point that you just really want to reach, but at the same time, it's like really hard for you to get there because you have this restriction. So that's why it's like imposing you to actually do the work, you know? Yeah. And it's like, because of that, when you actually do the work, that's when you start seeing the results of it because it's you feel like you've actually put the effort on it. So it feels so much more rewarding when you get a sad return and you get through all those things and you're like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. Like I did this all by myself, you know, like I've exactly. worked on this so hard and that's why, that's what, I, that's what I love about it actually. Yeah. <laughs> and so actually uh, my page. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. You can say. No, go ahead. You're good. Go ahead. Um, no, I was just trying to say that, you know, the name of my page is Saturn Revolution and that's more like personal because in my chart, I have a boat. I have a huge stellium in the first house of six planets. Uh, and so like three of them are in um, Capricorn and three of them are in Aquarius. So I feel like this energy blend, you know, here with like Capricorn and Aquarius, this is something that represents me, but I also feel like it's something that can help us all through our chart to sort of see how to navigate Saturn because we can tap into that Capricorn and Aquarius energy, like both both of these energies and see how to, you know, through discipline with Capricorn, but then also with Aquarius through like innovation and stuff like that, combine those things and sort of like yeah. figure out how to um, get out of our Saturn blockage and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And I think, and I, and I, I, I was always wondering like kind of where your, your page name came from. Cause I think it's, it's really unique. And I was like, I think it's, it's, it's a really good example of like that Saturnian Aquarian energy because I think I didn't I didn't I didn't know your chart until like just now. So that's why it's really mm-hmm. cool. Um because I agree, I think I think the Capricorn and Aquarius part, I mean, there is like this very different sort of approach to it. Um, but I I agree. I think I think there's a lot of Saturn is a lot about restrictions and like knowing your restrictions and knowing your boundaries and knowing those things. And I think um having that much that much Capricorn is kind of a lot <laughs> um yeah whereas, also whereas, my rising so yeah whereas for me like I'm a Capricorn rising but like I don't have um like many Capricorn placements besides like Uranus and Neptune but I'm more Uranus I'm more on the Aquarius side of the Saturn stuff um mm-hmm. so I'm more of the like the more like communicative the more sort of social aspect of it less of the like kind of more Saturnian restrictive sort of energy, you know? So it's, it, it's been a little, a little interesting in that way, but I think, um, for me, like I said, I've seen a lot of, I've seen more of the Aquarian rebellious nature, um, in myself versus like the, um, Saturnian like restrictive nature, but I've seen both because of course I'm a Capricorn rising, you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. so yeah. And I think, so does all, wow, okay. Well, I guess, what is your opinion or, like, your experience with Saturn Aries? Like, what do you really think is a, like, your personal experience with Saturn Aries? And then I think, I'll talk about mine, then we can just kind of go through them, I think, the so Saturn signs or Saturn houses and stuff like that, yeah. Okay, uh, so I feel like with Saturn, whatever, like, whichever sign it's in, it's sort of like, you know, it just imposes a restriction a restriction over fully uh, embracing the traits of that sign mm-hmm. specifically. So like for Aries is assertiveness, right? So it's like really going for your independence and really like allowing yourself to uh, be free and take impulsive decisions and make mistakes and <laughs> things like yeah. that. And I guess yeah. that's something that people with Saturn Aries struggle with and that I struggle with. And especially because it's in my third house, right? It's connected to communication more. It's also three yes. degrees of Gemini. Uh, and there's also like my Mars is in Libra. So that means that my Saturn is opposing my Mars. Oh, <laughs> in yeah. You position have, you know, there. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of like repeating themes of like self-assertion of energy and learning how to how to best like... Um, focus your energy and i think i think a lot of people that have saturn aries as well as capricorn rising have that Mm -hmm. where it's like you have to really figure out exactly like where to put your focus and put your energy because saturn aries you're you're like a person or like a generation that's like either you like start something and then like you like don't believe in yourself and you fail and you just fall and you like never want to do it again there's a lot of lack of self-belief or it's like 
I'm going to go and just go super hard at this thing. And I'm just going to like completely like, just like steamroll it. And it's like no in between with serenarians. But what I've found is when they commit to something, it's like, they like commit, you know what I mean? Um, True. Yeah. yeah. And so I love serenarians. My Saturn, like all my friends have serenarians or Saturn Aquarius. (laughs) It's it's, it's great. It's great. Um, So yeah, I think that's, that's cool. I like it. And I think a lot of things with Saturn Aries I've seen is this like active perseverance, like needing to persevere in a, in, like in a, in a direction and, and stay consistent, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and then like, also like, there's a lot of like, um, kind of loneliness around Saturn Aries too, where it's kind of like, you kind of have to really be alone to know how to self generate your energy or how to best use your energy. I've seen that a lot too. I don't know if that you would this- agree with that. Uh, maybe I feel like Saturn Aquarius maybe would be more of the loner one, honestly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> but go ahead. yeah, but still, there is uh, this side to it. And no, I was just thinking of like there, there might also be a setback connected to movement, for instance, for me, also because it's like opposing my Mars. I either like have times when I'm moving and like I work out or I do yoga or things like that or I have times when I'm just not doing anything and it's nothing in between like I cannot find a balance it's very hard for me to find a balance so movement energy I have really low energy sometimes you know but it's all about like working with this and seeing what actually works for you with Saturn in general it's like figuring out um for instance, like not uh, judging yourself for your routine or things like that, but just making your own sort of routine, which works for you. Um, because with Saturn, any Saturn placement, I feel like this idea of self-criticism can come up, right? So you are, you're, that area of your life and the sign that you have Saturn in, like there's so much self-criticism that you put on yourself and there's a lot of like uh, anxiousness, you know, that comes with that placement. So yeah. No, I agree. And yeah. I think, I, I think with Saturn energy, it is something that, <clears throat> like you said, it, 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 whatever sign or house it's in, it definitely affects that area. It has some restrictions to that. And I think it's a lot of like knowing what your limits are within the confines of that specific sign, you know? So like kind of the, um, the, like for Aquarius, for me, it's like knowing a lot of like the social limits, like a lot of it, but also it's my first house. So it's a lot of that too. Um, mm-hmm. it's kind of more of the, like, how to assert my energy in that way. Uh, but I've seen with Saturn Aquarius, it's like a lot of like knowing how to read a room and knowing how to read like an environment and knowing kind of who to, who to align with and who to kind of like be, be friends with and kind of like what sort of like purpose I have. But also Saturn Aquarius is a lot about, we see it now, like with people getting labels and like understand how they fit into like the society and things like that. Uh, And I've, I've learned that like, there's a lot of power in labels, but there's also a lot of disempowerment with labels. And there's a lot of things with like social groups with that, that I think we're all kind of learning with Saturn Aquarius currently, as well as my like main lesson on that, you know? And so I've had to like, kind of had a lot of mental boundaries too, because Aquarius is a mental sign. So it's like, I've had to know like, kind of how to like, keep myself more, more focused on like what is actually practical and like logical and what's important as opposed to just kind of like going into like some like other sort of nonsensical way of thinking or nonsensical like sort of uh like thought and it's really a lot about the social aspect of it and i think it's interesting that during saturn aquarius we have this pandemic and all this like literal social boundaries you know where it's like those yeah. are imposed and forced on us to get us to really figure out who we are and how we fit in the bigger picture of things. So that's what I've seen with Saturn Aquarius. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, we're still going through it, so I'm still learning more about it. I have plenty of notes on Saturn Aquarius for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's it's its own thing. And I think I, I don't, I love talking about Saturn Aquarius, but I kind of want to talk about everything else too, because I think there's a lot of other Saturn placements that I think are obviously in this chat and also that may watch this later that want to know. So, um, so, okay. So we got Saturn Aries, Saturn and Aquarius. I love that. I I just, I love Saturn Aries people. Um, (laughs) We can just take it one by one. But before, before that, I just want to mention that one thing that I feel like comes up with Saturn is like what you said, right? It's sort of also connected to the society at that time, especially like how society was at the time when we were born, for instance. Mm -hmm. 
um, and what restriction we have connected to that and how we react when we first go into society, if that makes sense. So for instance, like as a kid, I feel like I feel like we are not born with our Saturn restriction. We in, it's kind of like imposed on us as we start living life, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like as a, as children, we are all like in our um, we are very uh, easygoing and everything else. And then this Saturn restriction, something I feel like happens around our childhood, which imposes like a restriction on us when we first sort of like go into society or something, or even later on, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But that's when we sort of like have that first impact. And I feel like th- that's where uh, that inhibits us. And that's how Saturn is felt. Well, we are kids and then we sort of like carry it on throughout our lives. And then we get to our Saturn return where we're able to be a bit more mature about it and accept those sides of ourselves. So I feel like for me, because Saturn is in my third house and for people that have Saturn in their third house, like depending on the house you have it in, you can also tell like when exactly that sort of restriction happened out from outwardly like from society so for me being in the third house is connected to school right so that's where like for instance i remember in kindergarten like i was super talkative kid like everyone would call me you know i i think i mentioned this on my stories but like a broken mouth in romanian it means like you're just like your mouth keeps on (laughs) it doesn't shut up you know it keeps on talking yeah and like people would call me that way and then school happened and people didn't like I couldn't fit in I just couldn't fit in I hated school you know (laughs) yeah and just people were were being very mean and I couldn't express myself outwardly so that's where that like society thing came in and everything and that's where my so like my throat chakra felt blocked you know in that moment and right now like I'm I'm still, I still have social anxiety sometimes. Like, it's still not completely done. But still, the fact that I'm doing this life, like, it's a big thing for me. I know. You know, I'm, so, yeah. I'm so excited. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is so great. Yeah, because you were like, yeah, I've seven there's the third house. And I was like, excuse me, how are you, how are you doing this right now? <laughs> um, yeah, it's like taking the initiative of Aries. But yeah, so this is what I feel like we can actually uh, talk to also when we go through the signs, for instance, with Taurus, right? That would be like the next one after Aries. Uh, this, there might be some, um, like some restriction while growing up, which is connected to stability or maybe, right? Like maybe the environment while growing up for this person was not very stable. And that's why they have to, like right now, they have to actually in their life, find their own sort of stability and make that match with themselves as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And I think, I mean, I love, I love the way you looked at it with the Saturn in the houses in the sense of that kind of being the timing of things, because that definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and I think a lot of people don't recognize that portion of it as well. And I think um, as for Saturn and Taurus, um, where we're going next, I think there's, there is that, um, that imposing of, you know, kind of, there's a lot of, what I see with Saturn and Taurus is like a lot of poverty consciousness, a lot of poverty sort of mindset in that way, because there was like a lack of resources um, or like the resources were very steadily, steadily grown like Saturn. And a lot of people that I see that have Saturn and Taurus, um, they, they get a lot of hand-me-downs or they have to like really go through Mm -hmm. and um, like get a old car from their parent or from someone, right? And then they have to kind of run into the ground and kind of run it to its last like life and really appreciate the resources they have until that last moment. And then Saturn will be like, okay, you've you've done the work, you've done the time to appreciate this resource that you have and it's given you whatever it's given you, right? Um, now we're going to kind of push it up from there. And I think uh, that's what I've seen a lot with Saturn and Taurus. <clears throat> um, I've, I've seen um, also just like a lack of, of love too, a lack of kind of like feeling like they deserve love. Um, so there, there, there could be like an attachment to that physical resources where it's like, I I really need that to feel love, but also, um, in the other sense sense of it too, there's also that like actual love relationship thing that centers in the sign of Venus too with Taurus. Um, so it's a lot of the, like figuring out what they really actually want, what they're really, really worth. And those sorts of things. Yeah. Lack of self-worth. Exactly. That's, that's a lot of kind of what, um, what it is is a lot of that. Yeah, like they, of so that's that's what I've seen with Saturn and Taurus. But I think a lot of them, after they go for their Saturn return, I think they they have a, a really good sense of gratitude and and really good sense of that those sorts of things. So that's what I've at least seen with Saturn and Taurus. I don't know if you want to. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. 
yeah it's it's like that and it's like like I said, you know, once you went through it, like the rewards are so much better. So I guess that's how it feels with tours. And it just feels like, um, because, you know, like we are talking about how to master Saturn. So with time, that's one of the answers because I feel like in time things get better. And also with this Taurus placement, it's like in time they actually get to know their worth and it sort of reflects around them also maybe with their, like the things they own or things like that. But without, there's also this sort of detachment that they need to um, to have, like to not over-identify, like he said, with their possessions and things like that. Yeah, and I think I think Saturn in general can also be be kind of linked to over identification with specific things in the houses as well. Like Saturn Aries is kind of like over identification of the self and like the energy and the will, and then Aquarius is kind of like over identification with labels, like we talked about. And this is kind of like an over identification with like your reef, like what you own, like your you know the the Taurus the the the, 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 the Taurian sort of things, you know. Um, yeah, it's like a weakness, like a trigger, you know, yeah, that trigger yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that was Saturn. I mean, do you have anything, anything else to add to Saturn Taurus, or do you want to move on to your your Saturn Gemini? We, we can we can move to Saturn Gemini. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can go ahead and go first, considering you have some you have some more uh you know uh, experience with this sort of like sort of energy. Sort of energy. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's definitely. I feel like it's. First of all, it's connect, connected to communication, right? So, like, maybe while growing up, you know, this person didn't have, uh, wasn't listened to, for instance, or their ideas, their spark, they were not, uh, put, like, there was not enough attention put on it, or there was not enough communication, like, in the family or things like that. This can also be connected to school, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also about, um, I feel like mostly... Maybe a Saturn in Gemini would take things very like either black or white, you know, at the beginning at least, and mm -hmm. they wouldn't be able to like see both sides of the story and they would over identify, like we said, with some idea, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess things that would help people that have, you know, Saturn in Gemini would be cooperation. So, sort of like trying to work in trying to do teamwork or trying to speak up, like having, I don't know. Uh, public speaking or not even that you know that maybe that would be too much for Saturn and Gemini but it's like at the same time these people are really good communicators and they're really good storytellers it's just that they really need to sort of embrace that in themselves yes I agree I mean you're definitely you're definitely hitting it on the head as a Saturn the third <laughs> yeah I think a lot of it like you said is they 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 have this value and I don't think they 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 share it or they feel like they have value in their words because it was so like pushed down when they were in childhood or when they were in those developmental years. And I think to work with that, I, I think it's a lot of like finding those similar to Saturn and Aquarius where it's like finding your group and people that can kind of vibe with the really weird thoughts you have of like just talking astrology, like as for my example, you know, um, mm -hmm. like kind of finding those people that, that you can speak to, I think it's definitely going to help like the Saturn and Gemini people to how to kind of understand that the energy and just having an outlet for their mind too i think because i've seen a lot of saturn and gemini having like a a lot of um just overactive mind and over communicative and they kind of don't know when to kind of like they don't know when to like they don't know the boundaries that within a conversation right they don't mm -hmm. know the boundaries within like kind of when they're oversharing or, un, you know, or not sharing enough. And it's kind of like Saturn is trying to teach them to like, let's figure that out, you know? And, and so Saturn and Gemini and, and the third house is also like siblings as well, or like short distance travel. So like my mom, mm. I'm almost certain had Saturn in the third house. I'm pretty sure. Um, because like, she has this very difficult way of driving where like, she's really anxious all the time. It's in Scorpio too. So it's like a lot of like anxiety around like, um like accidents and stuff like that um so there's like a really karmic relationship with the siblings a little girl karmic relationship with those short distance travels right because it's third house um and so there might be a lot of purpose within like the short distance travels like going to get like you know the next town over or whatever might be has a lot more purpose and a lot more um intention with that as well as all the conversations too so it, it kind, of, kind of vary with Saturn and Gemini but I think like you said like kind of mastering it would just be a matter of like 
you know, like believing that you can like be heard and that you know stuff that way too. So um, yeah, it's also connected to information, like knowing that you have enough information to, you know, uh, express it outwardly, I guess, and things like that. Um, and I feel like Saturn in the third house, since we're talking about this, is usually like just like a random fact, can usually be like the older sibling because you mentioned siblings. It's, I mean, for me, that's the case, you know, and I've seen a lot of charts with that might be the case as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do have. Uh, I don't know if I want to answer that question just because it has to do with Saturn and Taurus. Just because we were just on Saturn and Taurus, I don't know if you want to. If we should. We answer can. That. I mean, yeah, sure. What What is it? I can. Uh, it says. See all the Saturn, questions. What does Saturn in the eighth house and Taurus opposite Moon in the second and Scorpio mean? Um, because we we did talk about Saturn and Taurus and kind of like the lack of resources. We're gonna mm-hmm. we'll talk about the eighth house Saturn in a little bit when we get there because we're only have Gemini. Okay. Okay. Right now, but um. Uh, well, how do you, I guess, how do you feel, uh, that would be like a second house Scorpio moon opposing a Saturn in the eighth, just to answer this person's question? I mean, definitely, uh, Taurus is, like I said, connected to possessions and things like that. And then the second house is also connected to that. So there's a lot to learn about this. I feel like it's all about control, you know, like trying to control over, overpower things and trying to have control over everything which is also linked to their emotional uh well-being somehow so it's like just learning to trust is very important like learning to trust that things will just uh turn out the way they should right yeah yeah no i love it see i love i love talking to people that have Saturn in the third house because they're just so like <laughs> formed and i'm like oh just some that i also have a capricorn mercury so i guess that's oh, <laughs> coming yeah, i don't I don't. I have a Sagittarius. What's your Mercury? Like, oh, okay. It's, in the, it's sad. It's in the 12th. It's like the That's... most. Ju- it's like the most Jupiter Mer- Mercury I've ever seen in my life. It's ridiculous. No, so, but it's cool. It's very, very wise placement. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, yeah. So that's. I mean, as for the to answer the Saturn eighth house Taurus out, I can't. I, I can't answer it as eloquently as you did. But I would say uh, <laughs> it is. It has to do with like a resource within yourself, specifically a resource with the mother and kind of like that emotional mm-hmm. nurturing because it's second ounce as well with the moon being involved um, and kind of like allowing your, like providing for yourself and not allowing someone else to um, necessarily provide for you with that Saturday in house. And the thing with anyone that has, this is kind of a random like tidbit, but anyone that has Saturn in Scorpio, Saturn in Taurus, they're going to get with this nodal, nodal thing, which we're not talking about in, like really at all, but this nodal thing is gonna activate and like get them to let go or like move in the direction of stability so just in general taurus scorpio is where that's what we're doing um throughout the course of the next 16 months but it's not what we're talking about so whoever that person is i forgot the name or their name but uh i hope that helps a little bit so uh yeah so that was saturn okay, yeah. and we were at saturn and gemini so now we're at saturn and cancer right mm-hmm Okay. Yeah, so emotions, right? Like, yeah, right, yeah. Super easy, right? But it's not for people who actually go through it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I feel like Saturn in Cancer is, yeah, also really difficult to deal with because it's like you have, you're like, they're very, they're very empathetic, but it's hard for them to express that outwardly. And it might be like you said with the mother, you know, that there can be a, like, misunderstanding there, or maybe they weren't, like, um, they didn't have a great emotional connection while growing up uh, with their mother, or maybe there was like an overbearing of like trying to, um, you know, their mother trying to be controlling. And that's why they have this sort of restriction now as well. But that's also with, yeah. Um, And yeah, I guess it's all about sort of like finding connections which um, align with who they are, but also speaking on their emotions and just allowing themselves to feel their emotions because they could really numb them a lot yeah. of the times. Exactly. And I, and I, to go back to what you said in like a while back about it being connected to like kind of the timing of like when you were born and kind of that sort of like the house or placement is kind of like a lot of where those restrictions come in because it is cancer. This does, you know, represent like, the family, the mother in specific, you know? Um, yeah. And I think a lot Also of, in the fourth house. So. Yeah. In the, well, in the fourth house, even I think even more so than in cancer. Because um, it's, like, so private, you know? And I think this is, like, really about nurturing that kind of, like, private, um, 
you know, like private sort of feelings and being able to feel safe in that. Cause cancer is all about like the comfort and like the, like what you need to emotionally stabilize when you have Saturn there, it like, doesn't really know how to really like kind of keep that stability or have stability because when you try and put the moon and Saturn together, they're not really friends. Right. Because the moon has waxing and waning and Saturn's like, I want you to stay in this limit. Like, it's like, it's like, it doesn't really, like, you can't really take waves and be like, we're going to put you in a box and we're going to keep you kind of in that wave. You know what I mean? So, and also I feel like, uh, uh, cancer is very sensitive and then Saturn is very like, uh, you know, authoritative. So it's like these clash and it's like someone is just, uh, I don't know, being mean to you. <laughs> yeah, no, you know? and it's, it's a lot of sensitivity. And I think with Saturn and Cancer, it's like, it's, they have to find their own emotional authority. And like, because I think, like you said, it's this authority part with the Saturn part and this like emotional sensitivity. And it's like, they have to find their own authority in that. And sometimes that's really vulnerable and difficult. Uh, but they have to recognize that they're kind of their own emotional authority in that way. And it takes a long time for someone with Saturn and Cancer because, you know, they have to spend a lot of time alone sort of and, and to get in touch with their deeper, their deeper emotions. It's not like it's like Saturn and Scorpio, another water sign where it's like, you know, everyone else's sort of darker parts. It's like, you have to like really sit with yourself and like strengthen your kind of inner emotional walls up to get better, to kind of deal with the world and go out and do, you know, the other side of it, which is Capricorn, like the, the, the external things. And so Saturn and Cancer, I think, is a lot of, like, internal suffering, where it's, like, private sort of suffering, where people don't really see it. Unless, of course, it's, like, you know, put somewhere else in the chart, like, on the Ascendant or something. But for the most part, I think Saturn Saturn and Cancer is very, like, when you're home, that's when you're learning the most lessons. Like, that's when you're learning to self-regulate and to keep yourself kind of emotionally stable. And then eventually, in time, after your Saturn return, you're going to be, like, perfect to like stabilize <laughs> yourself and stabilize others you know you're going to recognize the yes. power of emotions and the strength of that so i think it's really cool Saturn and cancer and you can definitely have a career in something that involves empathy in general because yeah. they would completely master that as well yeah yeah so yeah i like Saturn cancer it's fine. um do i go on to saturn and leo yeah, should we like also mention houses or I mean we did say oh, that the fourth house kind of, is like yeah. family uh, and kind stuff. Of been doing so both. I mean <laughs> Yeah. I mean if you want, um you mean kind of like putting them together with, with what we're talking about, you mean? Like in, in the order kind of? Yeah, like in the order, I mean. So it would be yeah. like Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean so just you wanna, like you wanna talk more about Saturn in the in the, in the fourth house then? Not a lot, but just <laughs> You know, just mentioning the fact that it's like, like you said, like it's connected to family, but so much more than that. And depending on which sign you have your Saturn in, if it's in the fourth house, like that's how those are the things that you sort of also inherited from your family, but also the things that you sort of like need to break off from and make like your own. Um, I always feel with Saturn, it's like, even if it's not in Aquarius, you still have to learn how to make your own way through it, you know, like find yeah. your own inner thing that just works for you and it's very authentic to you. And I think that in the fourth house is like breaking from breaking away from family patterns. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. See, I, I love your Mercury and Capricorn. It's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, but I agree. I think, I think it is. It's, 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 it's about being able to kind of, um, get that family life sort of staple and that and then it might be too Saturn and Cancer or Saturn in the in the the fourth house maybe like you may have had to have been like the authority figure within the family or for the family like this is like a lot of Mm -hmm. people that uh, you know they lose like they lose like the main authority figure in the family whether it's you know the maternal or paternal um you know parent or whatever it may be and then they have to step up at a younger age and kind of be that parent for the family with that sound in the fourth house in a sense you know um and i've seen that uh pretty prominently and then yeah there's a lot there's a lot of that and there's also a lot of wounding around um, just the relationship with the mother so there may have been some like distancing from the mother too with a sound in the fourth house um where it's like they have um like they're not quite able to connect with the mother not just like the actual like their own internal like their own emotional aspect but also like just mother energy in general like they they might not have 
had that like safe space or that sort of um, relationship with the mother that is more uh, free flowing. It was probably more restrictive or more like distanced potentially depending on obviously other things in the rest of the chart. So, yeah. True. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, hey, you go ahead. Yeah, we can just talk about Saturn and Leo now. <laughs> okay, you don't want Saturn and Leo. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is, again, quite difficult, right? Because it's like Leo is very uh, a very courageous sign, right? It just wants to lead and it just wants to uh, show their potential and express themselves at all, at all times to see that we got like a question or something oh, okay. um and my mom's fourth house is ruled by capricorn and her father died and so just said fourth house the dad will do small things in regards to that house like wines and tours and green pipe rings <laughs> the dad the dad will do small things in regards to that house. oh that makes that does make sense um yeah, I mean, Capricorn and Saturn in general are connected to father figures. So it's like any aspect that you have to Saturn can show or the house you have Saturn in can also show things about your relationship with your father, I think. Yeah, and also I think it is too like um, <clears throat> kind of what I think they're hitting on too is that um, Saturn and whatever sign can also bring specifically somewhat kind of blessings from that paternal side potentially or like more of a specific mm -hmm. lesson from that paternal energy. So like for me, it's Saturn Aquarius. So a lot of it has been um, where like my dad is kind of like a, like a motivating factor, at least in the sense of like what I could be or my aspirations in that way, like more of the Aquarian aspirations. Um, and I think that's kind of like where I'm feeling like they're going at because like they have Saturn and Taurus, they bring them like, you know, these uh, yeah, yeah, and things like that. Um, and yes, the live's going to be saved, so you guys can rewatch it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna answer the next the other question we have too. Um, my chance, that's very much the main caretaker. See, that's cute. That's very cute. Like that's very much the. Like I feel like that's very, mm -hmm. very nice. And then we do have another question. I don't know if you saw that, but um, it says I don't know if it's gonna come up. Mm -hmm. There it is. So it oh, says okay. it says what's the difference, for example, between Saturn and Gemini and Saturn the third? So. Um, that's all you. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay. So there is a huge difference. I mean, it's not the same thing to have Saturn in like a zodiac sign. And then it can, there are some similarities, but still, I feel like the difference is huge. Um, and with Saturn, like I said before, you know, it can be connected with the time when you had to go through that restriction, which can be in school or connected to like short distance travel when there's something that happened around when you were in school or there's something connected to maybe your hometown, you know, the third house is also your hometown. So that's where maybe the restriction started. Whereas with Saturn and Gemini, it really depends the house it's in for the house it's in. So we can see where that restriction started. And um, other than that, I think that, uh, I mean, with the communication part, it's quite similar, but you would have to look at where Saturn in Gemini is and which house it's in to see the exact difference between like Saturn in the third and then Saturn in Gemini. I think that the house is very uh, important in here. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. I agree. And I think that with Saturn in Gemini too, to kind of add, add to that, I think if you have Saturn in Gemini, but it's not in the third house, you can kind of see, like look to see where Capricorn's at or where Aquarius is at to see where that energy is kind of going. And those things are kind of like what you may be struggling to speak about, you know? Um, so like Saturn and Gemini, like if you have Saturn and Gemini in, you know, let's just say, actually it doesn't really matter what house it's in, but you just have Saturn and Gemini, but then you have Capricorn ruling like your first house, right? Or like, let's say like your fourth house, um, you know, it's kind of like a need to communicate specifically about that area of life where Saturn's kind of being exposited to or it's being pushed towards. So it might be, you know, you might have difficulty really communicating about your needs and like what you want and the self-direction you want to go in if it was a Capricorn rising with Saturn and Gemini. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously like, you know, if it was Saturn and Gemini, but you had Cap Capricorn ruling your, you know, fourth house, um, 
it would be like a lot about communicating about like things that you don't want to say about the family or those are kind of like that's like you know that's that's another way to kind of approach it that's how i recharge there's a lot of that's a lot of sagittarius like craziness of just like all over the place um but no but it makes sense yeah i would say looking at that too and then um versus Saturn in the third house there is a lot and i kind of we kind of referenced it earlier so um because we we talked about a little bit earlier but it's um i find it funny that all of them the one the one that comes back is Saturn and gemini of all of them but uh it, it was the third house is a lot of like restrictions in like the um the short distance travel is kind of like what you were saying um and kind of the community you have around you um really pivotal relationship with the siblings or kind of like a responsibility for siblings or older sibling in specific uh and then also like those short distance travels that you do are a lot more um, purposeful and a lot more kind of important to you also of course Saturn the third is more of like the car like issues with car and kind of like needing to have transportation and transportation issues versus like Saturn the third is more of like or not Saturn, Saturn, third. Saturn and Gemini is more of like the actual act of communicating and kind of like processing your words and finding out how to speak correctly. Uh, but Saturn, but both can kind of be difficulties with driving, but it just kind of depends. So that's what I would say. Yeah, and also with Saturn and Gemini, in, in general, like the, no matter which sign you have your Saturn in, you can look at the ruler. So for Gemini, it would be Mercury. So you can also see more about like how your Saturn is playing out. Like, see where mercury is in your chart yeah um so so we actually already did talk about saturn first so this is going to be a save live so you guys can like rewatch it and like you'll be able to kind of like skip around and see it um okay so Sa- saturn and leo we were talking yeah, about I know, that, I know, right I know, so I know, we're both trying like <laughs> recap recording and be like let's go in order so yeah so saturn and leo saturn's a good yeah. one. go ahead um yeah i did say that there is like Leo is very courageous and then Saturn is very restrictive. So it's like you have there. I feel like with Saturn and Leo, there's so much, so many things that these people just keep to themselves, you know, sometimes like, which are, is connected to their inner, to their purpose, actually, to their identity, to their self-expression, because the Leo is ruled by the sun. So also depending what your sun sign is, you can see how that plays out as well. But I feel like with Saturn and Leo, it's like, yeah, definitely while growing up, maybe there was not enough attention that was given to you or to your personal identity. And it was like you were made to feel really small while growing up. And that's what made you feel like you're small and seeing the world like that. But then in time, you do definitely learn how to embrace your inner gifts because that's also and your inner talents and how to have fun, uh, how to, you know, like really go for things that are connected to romance and uh, that are connected to like pleasures of life in general. And I think that's, that's really beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. And so I I definitely agree with that. And I think Saturn Leo has a lot of learning to do in relation to those like pleasures in relation to, you know, those sort of childhood joys, you know, because I think Saturn, Saturn Leo makes me like really kind of, kind of sad because I think a lot of it has to do like, like you were talking about with like, the areas of life that are kind of affected. I think Saturn and Leo, there's kind of like a stifling of that like childhood joy where this is kind of like similar to like a, I mean, you can kind of twist it to kind of be like a Capricorn sun sort of energy as well. Um, where it's like that, like kind of like having to grow up too fast and not really being able to enjoy being a child. But then yeah. as you grow up, as you hit your Saturn return or, or specific things, you realize that like that, it's kind of like the Benjamin Button thing which i don't know if you've seen that movie but it's like the like where they age backwards you know and they like kind of become like more lively and more childlike as time progresses because they've you know seen the limits of how childlike they can be as an adult and have it still be accepted you know and that's why it's it's really similar with like the 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 opposite which is the aquarius which is what i have and it's you know where the leo is very much like it's the child it's the i'm gonna be this creative fun person um versus like aquarius is like i'm just gonna be really weird to like just be weird right and saturn or saturn and leo i always think of this is like a really specific image but like you, you ever see like those really real not really this is like how to say this but like a lot older people like a lot like you know like in their 60s or 70s and they have like the craziest colored hair and they have all of this like really bright energy right 
to me, that's very much Saturn and Leo is like that energy of like, I've gone through and I've lived and I've done my time and I've repressed this childhood and repressed this like creative flair. And then all of a sudden it's like, I want to just change that and just shine and be fun and have fun. And there's a lot of like youthful energy that develops in time with Saturn and Leo. Um, that I think is really, True. really fun, but it takes obviously time because it's Saturn and that's the best way to master Saturn energy is just time. <laughs> Yeah, but I also think that, like, it's not like, you know, you are going to, like, you're not going to have these sort of uh, moments of having fun in life until you reach your Saturn and and things like that. Like, these people are going to experience this these moments in general where they sort of, like, break their, their Saturn conditioning, you know, for a while. And they're like, and it's really nice to see how this evolves, right? And how those people are starting to be more um, confident in themselves because that's mainly what this is about. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think it's a lot of too with the uh, creativity being stifled and not believing that you can be creative and that you can create yeah. anything of value too. Because Leo and Leo is very much like not, um, it's very much like linked to the inner child and that creativity aspect. And sometimes if you don't have that joy and you don't have that, like, like that spark, right. Cause Saturn stifling that it's not really like, it's difficult for you to access that energy, but in time, eventually you'll realize that you can slowly kind of seep out or like kind of spill out that love and that joy and that creativity. And eventually it becomes like this kind of like, um, Saturn. I like to, I like to kind of think of it as like a dam, like that energy of like, there's a lot of pressure in the dam and it's like eventually it like leaks out and like starts breaking the dam down and then eventually the water pressure kind of just breaks through and then just you know lets it out and with this being leo it's kind of like that the little spurts of like oh i am creative oh i am you know i am fun i am you know someone who deserves joy and happiness and you know pleasures and things and then eventually in time it like it just kind of gives all the way in and then you like start creating like you know music or art or different you know those sorts of things so mm. true yeah and with saturn in the fifth house i feel like it's even more connected to children but also to having children so maybe if people like you know people with saturn in the fifth but even saturn in leo sometimes it's like um maybe they're some of them they're meant to have children and once they do that's when they really tap into that childish energy through their children sometimes yeah. it can also work that way and the fifth house is also connected to talents and i feel like anyone that has fifth house place and like there's such talented people but i mean i mean we're all talented but i mean like naturally talented like gifted somehow like born with i don't know this amazing voice or with this amazing drawing ability or it can be anything it doesn't have to be just creativity but like there's a lot of genius in in there i feel like and sure. it's if you have a saturn there it's like you repress that a lot but i feel like um like you said, you know, once you allow that to to be shown into the world, it's like you really enjoy also getting that attention on you, which is which is justified. You know, it's not like you deserve it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, we will get to Pisces Saturn in a moment. We're gonna, we're we're both Capricorn rising, so we're trying to be very <laughs> diligent. And if we don't like stay in the mountains and stuff, we're gonna be like. <laughs> Because my Mercury and Saturn, like, yeah. well, let's just talk to everybody. But it's like, it, it's it's full, and I can't. I, I'm sorry, I just can't. Um, so, we can also answer some questions towards the end, right? If yeah, you know. yeah. So if you guys have questions, just put them in the in the chat or in the Q and A portion, and then we'll ask them. We'll answer them at, at the end there. Because we are we are very Saturnian, and we have and this is a Saturn a Saturn conversation, and we're trying to stay in the mouth <laughs> of it, you know. So, but uh, Saturn the fifth. So I. I think it does have to do with children and a lot of it has to do with that being a lot of their responsibility too. Right. And I think, um, like you said, with Saturn in the fifth, it's like when they have kids, that's kind of when they can see their start healing their inner child in that way. And they, and they kind of reconnect to that childhood that may have been taken from them in a sense. Um, and Saturn in the fifth house, I think above all, uh, well, and then also if you were to have like Jupiter and Leo, Jupiter in the fifth house, but for the most part, Saturn in the fifth house, um, the child you have or having children is probably one of the most karmic things you will have. And that relationship you have with your child is very, very karmic um, because it's going to show you and force you to heal and look at your own inner child that you may have neglected for a long time. But it's going to be something that's yeah. going to be very, very joyful in the long run with Saturn the fifth. 
Um, and Saturn the Fifth too, it does have um, like a, it has a uh, a way of it of like kind of like just not just like your children, but just the relationship you have just with children in general might be a little like difficult where, um, you know, like you might not want to be around childlike things. There might be some like, like distance from like, I get away from childish. me. Yeah. Like, like those sorts of things, yes. or, like, things that would be like, 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 I don't know, like fun or something, which I think is why Saturn and the fifth, they're, they're giving kids, they're like, I just want to watch like cartoons. And you're like, no, we're not watching cartoons. Cause the trigger is like the Saturn and the fifth house to be like, I don't want to explore that part of my life before, you know? So I think that's a lot of Saturn and the fifth and a lot of development of like the own individuality um, and kind of like being okay to express that. But we kind of talk about that with Saturn and Leo too. So there is like definitely an overlap. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just thought of, um, I actually forgot my thoughts right now. So. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that happens. See? Uh, happen okay, when like, our, like yeah, it has to do with Saturn in the fifth house. It was another thing that I wanted to say, like, but yeah. I'll remember it. Like, and, ro- like romance? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, true. I wanted to mention that these people might have a hard time, like, having casual relationships or just, like, you know, allowing them to, like, they want to have some, like, it's very restricted in that area as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think, because that's, that's part we didn't, neither of us talked about was the romantic, casual yeah. things, which is Saturn, like, Saturn in the fifth house. Because fifth house is also, like, where you go to have, like, sex for pleasure versus sex for, like, you know, procreation. Um, and so this might be like, this is a lot of like, potentially like if you're not having sex to have kids as a Saturn in the fifth house, you might be like, you might feel like really weird or really fearful of having sex when having kids. Uh, There might be like a lot of like, um, just fear of having casual sex for the fear of that having like a, you know, randomly either getting someone pregnant or getting pregnant, you know? So I think that's a lot with Saturn in the fifth too, because like, you know, the responsibility of a child and you're trying to like kind of push that away you know because like you said mm-hmm. in the beginning about Saturn Leo Saturn the fifth is like there's a lot of karma with having children and either you like really will have children like guaranteed or you will not um and it's kind yeah. of like a really like kind of black or white thing um with that so yeah sure. so. okay um uh, very cool yeah yeah um do you want to start <laughs> yeah so um i think saturn and virgo saturn and virgo is an interesting one because i think um saturn in the sign so we're, we're gonna see parts of it in a couple in about a year or so when saturn goes into the other side which is pisces um but i think saturn and virgo has to do a lot with health right it has to do a lot with like your physical mind in that way similar to saturn and gemini where it's ruled by mercury it has this like kind of more anxious sort of um mind um overthinking a lot of a lot of kind of worrying about that these people have a lot more of a purpose around um developing health and developing a good relationship to health and a good relationship with what they do in their day-to-day um because gemini and and not to kind of like and then this is my mercury in this in in sagittarius that's gonna like jump around and do a lot of stuff just so you know just so you're aware fine i don't mind (laughs) so saturday in the third house is more of like the 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 actual act of like kind of going around and and having these like sort of short distance travels whereas virgo is um the the more of the the purposeful like kind of like i have to go and do my laundry and i have to go and do like my grocery shopping and i have to do that so it's a lot about time management i see i see with with the with saturn and virgo um and it's about really prioritizing like your mental energy um and kind of being very diligent organized really building those routines uh because you might saturn and saturn and virgo is like one of those energies that i feel is it it either like like at at at, at some point they they have to have like an absolute like moment where they're just like in a mess of a room or in a mess of a space and they're just like i can't like do this anymore and then they have to like they have to take the initiative to like clean and take that take that sort of um control over their disorganization or their OCD tendency if it's on the other end of it too. Um, and so I would see that and there, there, there's, there's a lot of just like need to be healthy and need to be conscious about your body and what you eat and 
those things. And so Saturn and the Six can be kind of, people can perceive them as boring, um, but I love them. I think they're super nice. I think they're super like diligent and organized. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a lot of what I, what I think at least with Saturn and Virgo, Sixth House, um, specifically Virgo. Um, yeah, and also I, I have Jupiter there, so it's a little bit difficult for me to like, talk about Saturn and Virgo because I'm like how do you have limits in Virgo things so it's like it's my own <laughs> thing but um but yeah I think I think that's a lot of Saturn and Virgo is just having those those limits and kind of utilizing your mental energy productively um and yeah just using your mind productively as opposed to just like disorganized mess you know True. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it can be on both sides. Like you're either super organized or you're super disorganized and you have to like find a balance. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a Virgo moon actually. So I feel like it's a lot about, yeah, it's a lot about, you know, uh, it can, a lot of perfectionism tendencies can come up, but I feel like what helps Saturn and Virgo people just like moon in Virgo people it's like prioritizing things and literally just writing things out like to-do lists I feel like that is our you know like any in general Virgo placements like that is something that helps them to keep track of what's going on and uh yeah it's definitely connected to health and sometimes maybe, maybe even overdoing it like uh being a bit paranoid about your health and things like that and always getting a bit scared that, you know, you are not healthy when in reality the stress is actually making you unhealthy. Sometimes I feel like stress is something that can come up here, but with them, it's like they really need to, um, to find that balance and they really need to understand how, how uh, good they are and how, how much they can be of service to others in really practical ways. Cause that's where their mastery comes from, right? Like really, being these practical people and with the sixth house is a lot connected to routine. Yeah. I feel like, and, um, daily duties and, uh, things like that as well. Yeah. And I think with Saturn in the more so in the sixth house than in Virgo, um, it also has to do with like the actual work you do, like the day-to-day -day work versus like the career. Like people always think there's a, the work and career are the same when they're not. Whereas like they're the sixth house is like, it's and, and Virgo in, in a sense is like the, the things you do in a day-to-day -day habit that build up and create the life you want, right? And I think um, Saturn the Sixth can have, like, a difficulty building that routine and knowing what the purpose is of how they're kind of focusing their energy. And I think, too, as it relates to, like, coworkers and employees, too, there might be some really difficult relationships with, like, your employees or your coworkers, the people you have, and your people that you work with. There might be some, like, developmental delays in that where you might not feel like you like kind of vibe well with the team or you kind of like work well um with others right or you don't have the same goals as others or you don't have the same way of asserting your energy in a work environment um as others do and yeah. i think that, that's a lot of saturn in the sixth too um but then that's in the true. in the, the the long term of that i think with saturn in the sixth and also saturn and virgo potentially um, it's like you become an authority figure within your work and within your coworkers. So then you become like this sort of like um, leader with like you, you're able to really be very diligent, organized and practical and able to see how best to utilize the energy of like a workspace. And I think that is what, that's the reason why you, you had to kind of not be able to fit in with your coworkers or work the same way as your coworkers because you're being more efficient than them. And then you become like kind of a, a leader within your work or kind of like within um within yeah within, within within your work within what you do and kind of able to kind of like manage people and organize people that way so true i feel like when you can tell the difference for instance if like you're you can see like at first you can see all the flaws of your job or of your coworkers and like you focus so much on that but then you actually start working with that energy and using it to see the details and the ways in which you can you know so it's like yeah shifting your mindset from like this is not a bad thing how can i work with this to make it like to problem solve because problem solving is big with virgo exactly and i have i have jupiter and virgo and i talk about this all the time where it's like you can <laughs> see all the problems but it's like what with virgo energy they're so they're so fine-tuned with like how to improve things but if they don't have a kind of a goal of like why they're improving it or they don't see a purpose in improving it or they don't even know what they're improving it towards it's difficult it's like why am i like very negative yeah so that's why virgo mm -hmm. is typically given like a really negative like 
image because they're trying to be perfect and trying to find ways to improve stuff. But Saturn is kind of like, let's like Saturn really wants them to know how to best improve something like just overall, you know? So Virgo, Virgo energy is interesting. I, I didn't know you have a Virgo moon. That's super cute. <laughs> I like that. Um, What's your moon sign? I don't know. My moon's Aquarius. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really like, nice. Like I said, I'm very, so that's I'm, so that's the Aquarian in you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm very Aquarian. I'm way more Aquarian than I am, like pretty much anything else. Like I said, I'm not really like Capricorn at all. Um, and then there was someone in the chat who said something about the Saturn in um, Virgo, or I, where she said JC Dugard was the girl who was living in a backyard for years, um, and she was restricted, and then she had a kidnapper that took her kids, um, and she was kind of like a like. There's a lot of potential energy around slavery or like enslavement too because virgo is kind of like the overworking or working for uh, for someone else energy um and she had said that um this this uh commenter had said that uh she wrote her name on a piece of paper because she couldn't um they she could uh, she couldn't even like um speak her name and by being able to like kind of take that power away from the people that were kidnapping her had power over her um it kind of broke Saturn's restriction of kind of like being like, no, I have authority over the people that I'm working for. Like kind of a lot of that, a lot of that energy, I think it's Saturn in, in Virgo too. So. Yeah. It can be really heavy. Just... Yeah. It can. So I think we talked about Saturn and Virgo for a little bit too long, but I, <laughs> but I think we <laughs> but it makes sense. Just, you have, I have Jupiter there. You have the moon there. So it makes sense. Um, Libra. 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 Yeah. So um, I go ahead. Go. I have a Libra Mars. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I'm just starting with the place and that, yeah. I have a Libra Venus. So, okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> See, you get me. I oh, do, girl, sorry. I do. <laughs> yeah, all right. So Saturn in Libra. Okay, this, it just makes me think of relationships, right? Like yeah. right off the bat, because there's that connection there. So it might be that, and this sort of like lack of harmony that people, these people might have had while growing up, you know, like maybe there was a lot of chaos or maybe there was even on the other side of it, maybe there was like so much harmony that like no one ever talked about anything and they tried to just act like everything is fine and like just smile and like, you know, and the, the kid can feel that, feel that because it's not like you can like, you have also a strong intuition as a kid as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's the thing. And these people may struggle later on with their relationships, especially with um, even like building, uh, like networking, for instance, you know, or um, having like small talk or like those kind of things, you know, mm -hmm. of um, just random chats with people or things like yeah. that it can be small things, but it can also be the bigger things of like having trouble with uh, relationships with finding that ba balance in relationships. And they really need to sort of um, embrace uh, a lot of uh, both sides of themselves or mm -hmm. how many sides they have. Cause I don't feel like we have just two sides, but um yeah, do you have something to say? I'll think of more. Yeah, um, so Saturn and Libra, I think a lot of it, so um, because it's a cardinal sign, just like Aries, uh, Capricorn, and um, Cancer, it's about like the inert, like the um, assertion of energy. And um, I think Saturn and Libra, it's almost like they don't know which partner to go towards because like you kind of said, there's a lot of like kind of confusion around like, what relationships are because maybe in their childhood they may have seen relationships be very like pristine and put together and all those sorts of things but i think what i've seen a lot and this is kind of both saturn libra and saturn in the seventh more so saturn in the seventh house is like the um the specific of like really having to reflect back on your parents relationship and that dynamic mm -hmm. because that was like the most prominent relationship you've seen and, and seeing how there may have been power imbalances or there may have been um, difficulty in boundaries. And there's a lot of, I, I find a lot of people, like I said, this is more Saturn in the seventh than Saturn in Libra, but I find a lot of people with Saturn in the seventh, they they really need to analyze what their relationship with, was with, what their parents' relationship specifically was with each other. Because although that can be like amazing and great, um, there's a lot of things that has to be kind of, taken into account with that too because there's a lot of um 
there might be, a, like I said, a misuse of authority within relationships on either end. More so, this is more so because it's sadder, more so on the on the father's end, more than likely. Um, but I see a lot of that. Um, and then Saturn and Libra, similar to Saturn and Taurus, where it's both a Venus sign, there is this kind of like delay of um, knowing exactly what you want um, and knowing exactly like being very clear on what you want. Because Saturn and Saturn and Libra really needs to be like because Venus is Venus rules Libra and also Taurus, uh, and it's it rules like what you value, what you want, how, what you want to bring into your life, right? And when it's Libra, it's or when it's Saturn there, it's kind of like, okay, we have to put real strong boundaries on what it is that we want. Um, and this has to do with relationships, which is why a lot of that can come through analyzing, okay, I want my partner to be kind of like have the, you know, enthusiasm like this partner or my father or my mother, right? Or like make me feel this way or make me feel like this specific ex that I had or this, you know, like that's a lot of what Saturn and Libra is about is like being very, um, focused on what do you want out of a partner mm -hmm. you want this person to be and there can be a lot of seriousness with that too where it's like you want them to be perfect and there's no perfect partner you know true yeah that's so. what i wanted to say it's like a lot of perfectionism as well but also like saturn in the seventh house you know uh can because the seventh house is also like our shadow side mm -hmm. so it's a lot i feel like with saturn and libra in general and saturn in the seventh house it's like a, a lot of acceptance needs to be done like for instance if you have saturn in aries which is the opposite sign like you just have to go for things and take action but yeah. with libra it's just mostly like there's a passive approach that needs to be done and more like a reflective approach and more like a setback thing and it's like accept certain sides of yourself or like you said accept the relationship of your parents or, yeah. or maybe you didn't feel like that was okay but you have to accept that maybe sometimes you can mirror that or maybe yeah. sometimes those things those things come up in your relationships yeah. and like once you accept that that's when you're going to get through that and actually break sort of like the pattern as well mm -hmm um yeah and with saturn in the seventh house it's like a lot of people that you're going to meet are going to mirror the, this Saturn, saturnian energy over you yep. so they might try to control you or they might try to you know yep. tell you how to do things and stuff like that and impose restrictions yep so that's a bit difficult but it's like when once you do realize that you also have these traits within you because they sort of reflect it back to you yep. and you realize that you need to chill like you need to be yep, a bit more relax. um relax yeah i feel like it's a lot of stressful energy as well even here yep. a bit of anxiousness mm -hmm. and it's a lot a lot with saturn the seventh too in addition to what you said kind of pretty much the same thing is that there's um a lot of the partners you have are going to be mirrors of your own limits right they're going to be people that are going to that are going to show you Wow, this person, like, 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 you'll meet a person or a partner, you'll be with someone, you'll be like, wow, they're really vain, or like, they're really, you know, materialistic, <laughs> or they're really like, like, annoying, or whatever it may be. Like, you're like, you'll see your own limits yeah. in other people, or you'll see partners that are like non committal, right? Like, those sorts of things. And it's like, you have to, as a set of the seventh, you have to be like aware that the other person is also you. And that like weird fit and that weird like sort of mind it's mind difficult. Is, it is. It is hard. It's really hard. Um and this is also true for like cancer rising, semi also Le uh, Leo risings, but I've seen it a lot in cancer risings, but that's also their own that's a different way of approaching this. Um so yeah, I think I think a lot with Saturn and Libra is a lot of that. And Saturn and Seventh is a lot of that too. Um but of course Saturn is exalted in Libra, so it loves this energy, it loves kind of working with other people is looking to see how you're you're limiting yourself so i think that's a really a cool way of looking at it too yeah that's true yeah okay next mm. <laughs> uh so no yeah more no yes no yes i'm excited i love saturn and scorpio oh okay yeah i love it um oh i love saturn and scorpio i don't have it obviously but i love it you wish you had it <laughs> no gosh no oh my god no no if i had a saturday scorpio and a sun no if it was a new <laughs> it would I'm be really close scorpionic. to your sun no. yeah yeah it's my sun and my mars and my pluto i don't want i don't need a oh, saturday okay. we're good we're good we're good no that would be too much yeah 
No, but um, I, was, I was thinking of control just in yeah. general. Again, this scene coming up of like trying yeah. to control everything. Maybe you had like a lack of control like growing up. Yeah. You know, and like chaos is more uh is more so seen here than in Taurus when I talked yeah. about Taurus. And it's like you just have to find your own uh way of adopting things and like mm -hmm. try to not um Oh, it's really difficult because I feel like a lot of intense emotions might come up with this mm -hmm. place and like these people may have a lot of intense intense emotions and it's a lot about like that rebirth energy where you're going through the emotions and it's like sometimes it can feel lonely this one and I feel like um isolation but not to the point of like where it's super exaggerated but like sometimes spending a lot of time in solitude is something that might help these people with Saturn yeah. and Scorpio because they live they would live with that like darker side within them and sort of like accept that as well mm -hmm. yeah and i think saturn and scorpio i've seen a lot of it with empowerment and disempowerment energy i'm obviously very in touch with scorpionic energy so i've like i've seen a lot of this and this is why i like i like saturn and scorpio because it it teaches you uh, the depths of your own power and the depths of your own like emotional strength because scorpio has to do with like intimacy it has to do with intimacy with others that has to do with like acknowledgement of people's darkness and when saturn's there like you could you could have a very dark life because you're supposed to see kind of how disempowering the people can be but then in the end of it you can be in a very empowered state like a lot of people with saturn and scorpio um like you said it has to do with a lot of control and need to control um but because it's scorpio it's controlling it's not like the aries energy where it's control of yourself right it's the scorpio energy which is control of others which can always mm -hmm. which is always pretty much used as manipulation in that sense right in like the lower form of it um true and i've seen like my my mother has saturn in scorpio and i've seen her get involved with a fair and this was before i was even born but like um she got involved with a very abusive relationship um and like an abuse of power there's a lot of abuse of power with saturn and scorpio energy um and a lot of um seeing how like i said seeing how the how misuse of empowerment can actually like destroy you but also be very powerful um sure. and very helpful for you and others and then i've also seen a lot of this with debt and like debt management or um finances as well with that with that but that's more on the eighth than the scorpio part of it um but it's like kind of owning your darkness it's only like the fact that there's there's death is a part of life and there's darkness and you know and you're gonna feel like shit sometimes you know um yeah i feel like it's a lot about like you said learning how to work with that power and sort of like not using it to get revenge on others for instance you know so like not using it as a, not seeing like the world is against you because that's a lot of the feelings that you know can people with Saturn and Scorpio might feel that way like the world is against them and like they want to they might have these moments when they just want to like uh destroy everything and then start over again you know things like that and um it's like they have to find a way to do that in a constructive way. And when they really tap into their power, like that's really strong, especially if they do it for a cause or if they do it like, it, you know, people that have this, especially in the eighth house, people that have Saturn in the eighth house might be psychic or they might be really yep. in tune with their uh intuition and they yep. might feel things, but it's yep. a bit more difficult to tap into that energy at first. Yeah, and I think with Saturn in the 8th, it's it's also because the 8th house, and also kind of Scorpio, but more so the 8th house has to do with other people's finance, other people's energy. Um, these people, That's why these people are really good with managing other people's finances and kind of moving people in a way of like, I can see, because like you said, Scorpio is very psychic and intuitive, and it's like they, they can see like how best to work with like someone's triggers or someone's darkness or, or someone's power, right? You can see like, as a Saturn in the eighth house, you can see like how deep a person is and kind of the best place to utilize that power in a sense or utilize their passion, utilize their intimacy in that way. Um, and Saturn in, Saturn in any water sign um, or any water house kind of as well um, has to do with like the emotional aspects. So there might've been like a stifling of feeling okay to trust people, feeling okay to like, like let sure. people in to see you intimately um 
and and Saturn and Saturn more so in Scorpio, it definitely will restrict the ability to do that. And it's similar to Saturn and Leo, where like we talked about, where it was like the the kind of like you you slowly shine your light as a Saturn and Saturn and Leo, like we said, and then eventually you feel better to just kind of expose it all and kind of share it all in a sense. And it's similar with Saturn and Scorpio, where it's like, oh, I can show a little bit of my trauma. And then it's like, oh, that's accepted. Okay, I can show a little bit more, you know, and then it, and then it sure. becomes like more of an integration of your full self with the Saturn and Scorpio. Yeah, I know some people with Saturn in the eight, and it's like this thing, like you said, connected to intimacy. Like they, they are really scared to express their emotions and, you know, they're really scared to sort of like open up to their partner as well. So it can also happen like in relationships mostly. And when you, when you, like when you're starting to get closer to someone, you want to, you know, back down and things like that. Because, and once, like you said, once you feel accepted, you're able to actually open up. But this can also be seen with um, legal stuff, like having oh, some, yeah. you know, trouble with that. And yep. yeah, like with documents or with laws, like you said, with yeah. Um, mm-hmm. financial. Yeah, a lot of having, that. Like yeah. a, lot, a lot of like, like bankruptcy can be seen like that where it's like you get the like and bankruptcy is very much a scorpionic eighth house thing where it's like oh let's wipe the slate clean and start over um you know and kind of like in that way because it's like you got too like too disempowered that saturn was like okay let's clean this out but also that's a big lesson for some saturn and eighth house people where they have to manage that like financial burden or that kind of hit on their credit as a bankruptcy or as a financial loss or whatever it may be um because scorpio energy eighth house as well um has to do with the energy other people have over you or you have over other people it can go either way um and so saturn has to be able to find a bounds within that and how to make that productive so it, it can't it's kind of hard it's either like you're gonna have power over someone else or have someone have power over you and it's like a really it's hard to walk that line as a scorpionic energy uh, but I think Saturn yeah. in time definitely teaches them how to manage their emotions, other people's emotions in specific, and how to kind of and navigate that. Right. And these people may be very competitive or things like that, or they tap into that and they need to like, you know, in an exaggerated way, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And they could and they could be very um they could be very hurtful to people too. They, if they if they choose to be and that and that's why with Scorpio and I could talk about Scorpio energy for a long time that's why I'm trying to like make this one short but uh, they they're given a lot of power wherever Scorpio's at or Pluto's at um, and it's a matter of what you do with that power and Saturn is like really about finding the limits of your power so that's why I really love Saturn and Scorpio because it allows them to like I said like recognize how far their power can go literally because that's really what it's about um, and I think. I just, I love it. I love Saturn Scorpio. I think they're great people. They're really intimidating, but they're great people. Uh, they're really difficult to open up, I guess, but yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so we can go to the next one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that would be Sag. <laughs> yeah, Saturn and Sag, yeah. Okay, so this is again, like, any fire sign, you know, it's connected to uh, impulses, I feel like, and like, Maybe while growing up, you didn't have, uh, you couldn't really trust your, you couldn't really be, there were a lot of rules imposed on you maybe, or there was like, you didn't have freedom. You couldn't like trust your impulses. So while you're growing up, you're learning how to do that. And you're learning how to allow yourself to be free, but also how to allow yourself to have your own belief system and really go for the things that you believe in and not for the things that others want you to believe in. Um, And it's very like, I think that's a cool place to have, especially when it gets evolved. Like I just see this person being very bohemian and like traveling all over. It doesn't yes, have to yeah. be that way, but I just see it like that. Or someone that becomes like a mentor or a teacher, you know, who sort of like shares their wisdom that was actually gained through their life. And I feel like these people might go through a lot of uh, things, like a lot of like their life might seem like a movie because they have a lot of moments when it's like, you know, an adventure that happened or something. And that was like, there was some restriction with that or, and this can also literally mean restriction if it's in the night house, but yeah, restriction with like travel yeah, in general. Yeah. 
long yeah, distance think. travel. Uh, this yeah. is also connected to, I mean, no, I'm just saying all the things, but also connected to like education and yeah, uh, yeah higher learning. So maybe I've seen some placements with Saturn in the night mostly, which, uh, you know, they had a hard time in university or maybe they didn't want to study at all and yep. they were judged for it or things like that and they had to sort of find their own way. Yep, yep. I agree. And I've, I've seen that too. And I think Saturn and Saturn, and both Saturn and Saturn and Ninth both have kind of energy to that. And whenever I think of Sag energy, I always miss where my Mercury's at. So of course I'm like, I, I, I got this kind of, um, it's, it has to do with experience points essentially is the way I look at it is experiences mm -hmm. and experience points and, um, whatever planet, like, you know, kind of has Sag in it or whatever, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of, um, gathering of experiences and um, with it being Saturn and Sagittarius, it's like finding a, the limits of those experiences, which is why there's a lot of, you know, traveling and, and, and knowing like kind of be more purposeful with how you, with how you go and experience different cultures or how you go and, and learn. And I think a lot of people with Saturn and Sag, they don't really um, find the purpose in what they're doing. And it's difficult for, for them to find purpose in what they're doing because Saturn wants them to be very, like like you said, not impulsive and not very like like just going to just gather experience points. Yeah, sorry, sorry, my mom called. I was like, I, I was literally was like, I knew that was gonna happen. So let me just check real quick. Um, uh, so, but I, I I see a lot of that. I see a lot of um, the um I'm on a call. Um, and so I see a lot of that, a lot of the, um, the purpose of what they're doing and what they're studying is difficult for them to, to, to hone in on, um, uh, because the Sagittarius is all about like the purpose and the, the purpose of the things that you gather in the, in the third house, Gemini, right. Um, is like, where, where am I going with this? Cause that, cause Sagittarius is the archer that goes forward. It's like, where am I going with this? What am I doing? Right. Um, and so I see Saturn and Sag is very, um, just having to, having to have a direction and why they're learning what they're learning, why they're doing it, why they're experiencing life. Um, and kind of like, like you said with Saturn in, in the ninth is like having restrictions around their, um, their traveling and, uh, restrictions around like the direction that they're going in and why they're doing that. I think yeah. a, lot, a lot of purposeful action, purposeful, um, like study. You know, we do have a comment. I have nine house Saturn, and the two long distance trips I've ever had planned were both canceled due to world disasters. Wow. <laughs> oh I think God. I'll travel a lot more post Saturn return. Yeah, that's the restriction right there, right? Like, yeah, exactly. so very literal, <laughs> spot literal on. Thing. Yeah, you'll definitely travel more after your Saturn return. Yeah, and and with Saturn and any fire sign, I think it has to do with the restriction of kind of that joy. Um, in a sense, and restriction and kind of some sort of like actual energetic freedom. Um, because like, you know, where Aries, it's more of like the freedom for you to believe in yourself. Leo is like the freedom to like express yourself. And then Sagittarius is the freedom to like explore, like have that fun. Like I have freedom. I'm going to go and like a hundred percent go and just like fly yeah. and travel and do whatever I want, you know, and Saturn and Sag is kind of like, no, you, you got it. Mm, but like chill, you know, like kind of, you got you got to be more purposeful with it, you know. You can't just you can't just like go very impulsively, like you said with uh, at the beginning of that, you know. Yeah, and there's a lot of frustration. I guess that's where this impulse comes in because wherever we have Saturn, it's a lot of frustrations. It's like you feel frustrated that maybe you feel stuck in mm -hmm. one area of your life or something. So then you feel this impulse, like I have to do something, I have to break free, right? Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. Yeah, it can feel that way. It's a lot of that. And I do see too, this is more Saturn in the ninth, where it's um, a lot of kind of unlearning the the beliefs of like the family too. And kind of, of course, like, yeah. we, there might be some like really interesting, like interest in other cultures, other beliefs that are not really like your traditional family, like less, you know, less sort of um, what you're, what you've been taught, you know? Um, and so there's a development of that. And a lot of Sagittarius Saturns are more so ninth house need to experience that and experience that 
outside of the, the confines of their family, outside of, you know, their, maybe they're even home country in a sense, right? Like they have to go and experience it, have that like, just experience to be like, I know who I am now because I've gone and traveled to this country or I've, you know, studied this, you know, certain philosophy or whatever it may be, right? And so I think it's, it's fun. Saturn and Saturn is very, very fun. Yeah, and in the ninth house, it can also be connected to uh, spirituality as well. But mm -hmm. like you said, with uh, so like sort of finding a purpose, but in a more spiritual way. But it can also be connected with you talked about family, more like an ancestry or like mm -hmm. something connected to maybe if you have like some people from um, from your family that are of different cultures, sort of like tapping into that culture and going back to it and learning more about it and discovering yeah. yourself again yes. as well. 100%. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think there's a lot, there was something else I wanted to say about it, I forgot, but it's, there's a lot of that um, connecting to cultures and connecting to different sorts of energies. Oh, what I was going to say about it was Saturn. And, so Saturn and Sag is, is um, definitely like, like a, sp a spiritual energy, but what, what I found, and we'll kind of get this when we go to Saturn and Pisces too, is Saturn and Sag is more of the like the mental plane of it. Like, why do I believe what I believe? Like the philosophy, the kind of like understanding because Sa um, Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter, which is within our bounds of being able to be seen. So it's like the beliefs that we see, the beliefs that we've developed, you know, that's why it comes with the family and stuff like that. And it's, it's more of like knowing the beliefs and understanding the beliefs. Whereas Sagittarius is like actually living, like living it versus like just going and experiencing it within like the confines of our reality of our world of like, oh, I'm going to go to Rome or I'm going to go to so whatever, right? That's very Sagittarius. Whereas the Pisces part, like I said, we'll get there, is like very much the, the like living it, like actually living a connection to the divine versus just intellectualizing the connection, which is one of the, the Sag energy and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I agree. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm running out of battery, so you can continue with the next one. I'm looking for my charger, okay? Okay, you're good. You're good. You're good. Um, so we're on Saturn and Capricorn and Saturn and Pentels. So this is always a nice one um, because Saturn's at home here. I'm going to talk really slow so you can get your battery as long as you want. <laughs> so, um, so Saturn in Capricorn, obviously this is where it's at home. You're good now? Yeah. Wow, that, that was easy. <laughs> just tell just just tell Mercury and Sag just to waste time and it's so easy. You can just like <laughs> But um so Saturn and Capricorn, um this is um this is where like I said Saturn's at home. It's very comfortable here. Um it has a lot because it is a cardinal Saturn sign. Like I had said with the other cardinal signs that has to do with the nerd um uh, assertion of energy and kind of starting things and focusing on things. And I see this also with Saturn and Aries too, is like um, what they start, they really, they really have a lot of focus on what they start. Um, <clears throat> and they need to kind of be very diligent on what they do start because Saturn wants them to see something to the end. Right. Um, and it has to do a lot with our own authority um, and our own authority in the, and I think this is, once again, this is all the, the, the kind of Saturn and the Cardinal signs, but Saturn and Capricorn is very like, what is my authority outside? Like what, like, like what authority do I, do I have when I step out of my house or I'm at work or I'm seen publicly, what authority do I have and how do I utilize that power, utilize that authority, utilize that um, sort of public standing that I have? What do I do with that? Like, what do I, what's the purpose of me being in this public sphere or being a leader or being, you know, a, a boss or a manager, whatever, like what, what, what do I do with that um, leadership? Oh no, you're freezing. Oh no, my life, it's broken. Um, but, oh, you're back. You're back. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's the Saturn is like, kind of like what you're with Saturn in, 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 the, in Capricorn and also kind of 10th house um, is a, uh, you know, what do I do with the authority I'm given? Because a lot of it will just be given authority. They'll be like, here's a job. You're a manager. You're great. You're responsible. Um, and it's like, well, what do I do with that? Like, what is the purpose of, like, this job? Like, being being an authority figure, what is, why am I doing it? You know, uh, that's a lot of what I see with Saturday Capricorn, so... Yeah, definitely it's connected to authority and it's connected to responsibility. So like having a lot of responsibility put on you from 
the get go, you know, from when you're young, maybe being like the older sibling or having to take care of your family or even just putting so much pressure put on you to succeed. I feel like it's with that and in Capricorn, especially to succeed in your career, maybe your family wanting you to succeed in a certain area, like they want you to study, I don't know, to be like a doctor or something, but you actually mm-hmm. want to go and go about your art and things like that, you know? So it's like that type of energy imposed on you and with authority, and this might also come from a father figure as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that can also show, uh, I feel like it's a lot of stress that these people are under as well. And a lot of like self-criticism that they have to, mm-hmm. uh, like that they impose on themselves, but it's actually not their, it's not their self-criticism. It's like other people's self-criticism that just got stuck into their head and they need to find out how to sort of like find a balance and see like, this is not my voice in my head, you know, it's just... Yep what others expect of me yep it's well. a lot of it's a lot of unlearning what society wants them to do this is also similar with Saturn Aquarius but Saturn and Capricorn is like you're su- like the, it's very traditional right it's very like what is the like like you said like the family is kind of like this is what we do we go and we get a job and this is where you work you're gonna do this and this and that and Saturn and Capricorn may be like, no, I, I really want to be an authority figure in this way. Like, but they're definitely given that authority. They, they know they know how to work yeah. with it. But it's like they have to kind of unlearn how maybe their family had power over them or even just any sort of boss. Like there's there's a lot of with Saturn and Capricorn, there's a lot of like where it was in Virgo, where it's like you have a lot of interesting relationships with um coworkers and that's a lot of the authority. This is like the boss that you have, like, there's a lot of karma with that. Like, whoever you work for, um, there's a lot of that, um, of a need to kind of, like, look up to them or kind of learn from them or learn their limits in that way, too. So I think if there's a lot of stuff with Saturn Capricorn, I think it's it's, it, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. It's, it's, it's developing your own authority, I think, a lot of it. Um, a lot of it. So. Yeah, and in the 10th house is a lot connected to career. And I feel like having a sad in the 10th house can show potential for a successful career because, mm-hmm. you know, you just work so much towards that and that's like your end goal. And like you are actually going to reach that because you put so much effort into it, but it just feels like you're not getting there while you're doing it because you have to actually enjoy the process of everything because it just feels so like there's so much work. Or this can also be seen as like having to find balance between, you know, not working so much and also uh, being like balanced between career and home life and things like that. Well. Yep, and being able to like really, really balance, like you said, like just balance those those two polarities because I think Saturn and Capricorn will always give you more work to do. It'll be like, here, keep working, keep working. And these are people that like never really retire <laughs> because they like just <laughs> want to keep working because that's where their purpose is. Their purpose is yeah, to go and work and, and to go and kind of um, go forward and keep keep trucking along and keep doing it. But it's a matter of like, eventually Saturn will be like, okay, you've, you've worked enough. Like, you know, like my like my dad, he has Saturn and we um, have Saturn and Capricorn, not Saturn the 10th. Well, I don't know if he has Saturn the 10th, but um, he has Saturn and Capricorn and, and he's gotten more and more authority as he's gotten older over and over and over again he's gotten really far up there and it's like okay well now what like you're just gonna keep going up like what what's the point of this like you know what like why are you doing this you know if you can't provide for your family you can't provide for this you know like it's very much because it's in that ten thousand, it's right there it's gonna hit a lot of the other stuff where it's like you gotta balance like what is the purpose of this work you're doing why are you doing it are you just doing it for to have authority over your reality or are you doing it to provide for your family or provide for people or provide whatever it means. So. Mm -hmm. True. I need to check again if my phone is charging because I don't know if it is weird. You're good. good. The phone is weird. You're good. Are you good? Okay, is cool. this that it was always like the the screen was always turning black and I was like, is my phone dying? Or because <laughs> it was gonna, that's You're gonna good. happen with you. <laughs> yeah, You're but good. it's fine. You're good. Okay, so um Aquarius. Yay! Right? 
my favorite. And right after your, by the way, I wanted to ask you, like, are you at the degree where you're Saturn intern, or has it already been at the same degree as your Saturn? It's one, it's one degree. One degree, wow. So you so it hit you. <laughs> yeah, it literally hit me on the Jupiter, um, on the Jupiter uh, Saturn conjunction was when, when my uh, Saturn return happened. Um, wow. So it was, it was a whole thing. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's fun. Saturn Aquarius is fun. Um, I actually have learned to really love it and enjoy it. Um, it's been a lot of, um, Saturn Aquarius, obviously I'm biased. Obviously I have a lot to say on this. Um, but we talked about it like way in the beginning uh, too. But True. so obviously there's a lot of social limits with this, knowing what group you fit in, knowing what sort of um, alliances you have, association, me, associations you have, um, who you keep around you, you know? Um, the power of labels, you know, and, and knowing how to, knowing what the purpose is of those labels, uh, because Aquarius has to do with the social labels, the, the kind of fracturing that we put ourselves in, right? So it, um, a lot of it, as you've seen throughout the course of this, obviously astrology's gotten larger, human design, different sorts of things that we can use to group ourselves is what we've seen with Saturn and Aquarius during this time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sure. a matter of what you do with that grouping and what you're able to do. Because we can divide ourselves into X, Y, and Z, you know, whatever in any sort of sphere socially, whether it's based off of class, whether it's based off of astrology, whether it's based off of attachment style or, you know, MBTI, whatever, like literally you can, you can group yourself forever. Right. But what's the purpose of that? What's the purpose of finding an identity? What's the purpose of like going through and figuring out, Oh, I'm a Scorpio sun, Aquarius, moon, Capricorn rising. Cool. That's great. But what does that mean? And how is that practical? And how is that important? Right. Um, and that's a lot of Saturn Aquarius. I've obviously learned a lot about this. So I know quite a lot. And obviously we're all learning this together too, with the Saturn Aquarius. Um, and I've seen too, it is a lot of, um, group um mentality and, and how to manage a group and how to kind of work within the confines of um like a group right like group study and that sorts of way and um yeah there's a lot of that a lot a lot of influence a lot of social influence too like what to do with social influence what to do with um social sort of standing too is what i see with that. but obviously like i said i'm very biased because <laughs> i have it <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And it's very much, I feel, connected to being conscious as well. Like we see it now with this transit, like being conscious of your society, being conscious yep. of your environment, right? Mm -hmm. And sort of like learning how to uh, take practical action, not just sit there and do nothing. Like I feel like with Saturn Aquarius, like you and these people in general, like they have this sort of like inner uh consciousness i don't like revolution or something however you want to call it you know that they just really yeah. have to express outwardly because they know that they have like you said like a greater purpose and it's mm -hmm. like it always sits there with them and while they were growing up maybe i mean i don't know if you've experienced this but it's like you might feel left out right oh like, yeah you might feel like <laughs> do you feel like you're the odd one out you feel like you don't fit in but then mm -hmm. as you grow you just learn that like you're just asking yourself do i even have to fit in yep. you know that's because exactly. it's like when you're young you think that you do and you're trying so hard to do that but mm -hmm. then you realize that wait why am i even doing this like for whom because exactly. not for myself for sure exactly and it's like you go through your life as a saturn aquarius person like trying to figure out how you're unique and how you stand out for the rest of the crowd but then actuality your biggest asset is being able to relate to people like that's it, it's really weird okay. so like there's there, there's with like with Aquarius this is Aquarius energy well, like, they're very much like they will be so so gung-ho on being being different and being different in any way they can be different but the 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 positives about Aquarius energy is like the, mo the most positive is with you being so different and being so weird you can either be so weird that you've like been rejected and you reject yourself or with Saturn and Aquarius we can be you know able to connect to literally anyone because we've because we've done that kind of like dissection process that Aquarius does um where we figured out that you know I'm x y and z and I'm figuring out how unique I am and then in that search of uniqueness you find that you're you're just you're actually human at the end of all of that and that's all it is right um and that's how you relate to people it's, it's a lot of relating issues with people but then once you start realizing everyone's complex you're like oh okay cool you know, it makes it fun. Mm -hmm. That's true. I feel like 
because I'm an Aquarius sun, I feel like this is very connected to my ego, right? So it's like, yeah. if I'm, if like someone is doing the same thing as I do, then that is kind of triggering. And I feel like this can yeah. also come up with Saturn, but it's more like you have to uh, go beyond that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 100%. And with Saturn in the 11th house, this is, I feel like this is even more connected to community and to like finding your own place in a community. And I feel like these people could be great leaders or at least they can form communities by themselves, like some type of community that was never seen before. Or in general, with Saturn Aquarius, it's also connected to breaking, like, uh, maybe you, you know, you were growing up in a certain environment and then you, while while growing up uh, and you get more matured and stuff, you sort of create your own environment, which is more aligned to yourself, but it's so different from the environment you grew up in. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, yeah. especially like also with the 11th house, it's like you find a community that just speaks to you and... Uh, that's a great feeling, especially having sat in the 11th house and finding those type of people. And this is also connected to friendships, finding friends that understand you mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. And I think too, like, like you really hit on the head, like really finding that community and finding who you are. Cause I, I've always find, found, and this might be the rest of my chart as well, but I can very easily fall into other social groups. And I remember at the, remember at the very beginning of my Saturn return, I was like, which one do I stick with? Like, I'm like, which community would you, I want to really like, kind of grow and nurture and be a part of and i think that's a lot of um saturn aquarius as well as 11th house too but i think 11th house is a lot more on the the side of like uh like more of the associations you have less so the groups because associations and 11th house is also like um it's what you gain from your career so in the sense of like accolades and the sense of like awards and things like that so there may be like a real big like desire to have those things and and have like you know like okay like like for example with people that have said in the 11th house they may have like a really like a really difficult career but then eventually they end up reaching a public standing with their whole social circle and the whole association they're with changes or they're they've been striving to get like on a very extreme end let's just throw out a Nobel peace prize like as an example Like they strive to get that and then they get that. And then it's like, wow, my entire life changed because I got this accolade and I got this development for my career. Because the 11th house, people don't talk about that being all that like connected because it's the second to the 10th house. So it's like the resources you get from your career, from your public image. So it's a lot of things with that too. Yeah, true. And there's also a lot of pressure that could be put on yourself as well with this too. There's a lot of or I feel like this there's a lot of pressure. Oh yeah. 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 A little bit, yeah. To add. Add, right. As well. Um mm-hmm. and with Saturn in the eleven it's also connected to technology or social media or things like that. So I feel like nope. they could be like a, a big presence on social media or at least try to um engage into that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's similar to what we've been kind of talking about each time we've gone through Saturn in the houses, it's kind of like, well, what do you do with that, um, with that influence or with that social media? It's kind of about using it for a purpose, using it consciously and figuring out the confines of, of groups and associations and technology and kind of how it works, right? The limits. Um, so I think it's really, really cool. That was a lot about Saturn in the house in Aquarius for obvious reasons, but um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Saturn Pisces now. Yeah. Let's get on the Saturn this is- yeah, like we were talking about. Oh, you're good. You're good. Okay? You're good. <laughs> we were talking about uh, spirituality, like you mentioned before, which is more connected to. Um, I don't know. I feel like you know Saturn in Pisces is very like they could be very uh, intuitive people, and yeah. it's like a lot of the times they they can feel like the pain of the world or things like that. Uh, like yeah. you know they can they have a lot of feelings that they sort of confuse which feelings are theirs and which feelings are not and stuff like that. And that's why sometimes they need that sort of like with Saturn in Pisces, it can be that type of like escaping, right? You need to uh, get away because there's so much energy coming from everywhere and you don't know like where to go exactly or who to trust and 
Yeah, and that can be very confusing. It's a very confusing placement, you know, to have Saturn in Pisces because it's like it, mm-hmm. it just restricts your um sometimes it can also restrict your intuition. So it's like you you grow up not necessarily knowing exactly where you're going and then you you finally learn how to trust that inner intuition and that inner um yeah, drive that you have and I feel like that's what helps these people and spirituality in general like um finding an outlet or like a creative or artistic outlet where they can express these these repressed emotions that they have or or this pain that they might feel yeah. from the world and things like that like that would definitely help them a lot as well and this can also be connected to relationships right so having either uh either being scared of opening up because you feel a lot of like intense emotions or when you do open up you're like you can get a bit codependent because you over identify with the person next to you, you know, yeah. and it's like, yeah, I just want to be with that person because you think that they, they are giving you what it is that you need, but actually you do have that deep down. Yeah. So, I like that. I, I've never heard that perspective on it. And I really like that perspective. I think that's a really nice way of putting it because I agree with that. Like I said, that's, that's a new perspective. So my Mercury and Sag very much appreciates that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, with Saturn and Pisces, so there's a lot to say on this, and I think it's really interesting. We're in the about a year and some change we're going to be in it, which I think is really interesting to talk right. about. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, but also kind of like, ooh, what are we going to do? I'm um, scared. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of like, ooh, are we going to be okay? Like, what are we, you know, yeah. because Pisces is all about, like, okay, first of all, it's a mutable sign, so it changes, it moves, right? It has to, it has to pivot, it has, it has to do with similar to Virgo where it's, it's gathering information and seeing how best practically to use it. Um, in Pisces, it's gathering the emotional unforeseen information and finding out what to most practically do with it. So that's why it's difficult to manage a, or kind of manage having a Saturn in Pisces because you don't really know what best way to utilize these energies when you can't really tell what they are. You know what I mean? Um, so it's kind of hard for Saturn in Pisces because they don't know specifically what they're feeling or like they might not have um an understanding a clear understanding of so of like spirituality or of the unforeseen energies because obviously that's not something that is very easy to to discern what it is because it's unforeseen right um i've seen saturn and pisces all of every single saturn and pisces i've met they have this like underlying irrational fear or irrational like mental health habit or like something that is just really like really interesting um like i know a guy who had saturn in pisces and he would have like this really irrational fear of like like we worked at a restaurant and he had an irrational fear like a car coming into the restaurant and like hitting us and i was like um Mm -hmm. that's not normal to think like that but it's okay (laughs) you know so that that's a lot of the saturn in pisces that i see but it's um it is also because it has to do with spirituality. And as I said, when I, we talked about Saturn and Sagittarius, it's more of the living it, like living it, ex- like being an embodiment of spirituality, which is a, a thing that is something that needs to kind of, it's a development, right? You, you you can kind of see how far the rabbit hole can go, but it's a matter of what you do with that, with the Saturn and Pisces, you know? And I think it's just a, it's an energy that I'm like, ooh, I don't, I don't, Saturn and Pisces ain't my move because I'm like, that's just like really, it's just a lot of confusion. But I think it, I think when they connect to spirituality, connect to religion, connect to like an, an experience that they, only they've had, I think that's where a lot of the power comes in because they can see how, okay, I had this very crazy dream and this is what it, you know, what the purpose of that was, but they have to interpret it for themselves, you know? Yeah. True, but it's like sometimes not everyone has access to it. That's kind of the problem. You know, like not everyone is spiritual, not everyone can. So that's when they need to find different types of means to sort of like express that that emotion that they feel. And sometimes it can get bad because they don't know how to do it. So they just, yeah. I don't know, they just react out of their sub because this is also connected to our subconscious a lot and also the twelfth house, yeah, as well. And I think, uh, sorry, I was going to say that, um, I I think that because, so when you, when you look at Saturn and Pisces, I always like to look at Saturn and Virgo. And I think that 
when we looked at Saturn and Virgo, a lot of it was like time management. And then if you flip it and you go to the, the, the Pisces side of it, it's kind of like energetic management, but it's like energetic mm-hmm. management of like your subconscious of like your own limiting beliefs, like your own, like keeping your energy system, like in check and doing like your meditation, doing like your spiritual retreats, doing like whatever it needs that you need to do um, to kind of know the bounds of your own spirituality. And a lot of, that's why a lot of them are just like, I'm just going to drop acid. And it's like, okay, good luck. You know, (laughs) it's a matter of of managing that energy, managing the subconscious, which I think is obviously a difficult thing. Yeah, for sure. And with um, Saturn, the 12th house, it's even more, I feel like, connected to subconscious because it's sort of hidden as well, like even more hidden from you. Yeah. Uh, And it's a lot, I feel like it's a lot connected to mental health and sort of like learning the depths of your mind and really sort of like taking a step back and understanding that, oh, so the reason I'm doing this behavior is because of something that I went through before or like really, you know, taking a step back and actually assessing your behavior on a day-to-day basis from a more rational point of view rather than just living life and then you know, because I feel like with Saturn the 12, like these people might have, they might have to experience certain events in their lives, which just, which just wakes them up. And yep. it's like, whoa, so I've been living like this my whole life. And I didn't know, like, it's just like, maybe if they have depression or if they have, I don't know if they're doing some really unhealthy thing, but without realizing it. And it's like others from outside, they might see that, but they don't really see it as well. Yeah. So yeah, but it's, also it's a lot of like internal uh the process is very internal as well like you you have to realize what you're doing and you have to like once you go through something that triggers that that's when and accept it within yourself and actually see it that's like the first step to solving it sort of yes yes i agree with yeah that. i think saturn the 12th um also has a way about it of isolation a lot of isolation mm-hmm. not like just social isolation because that's that's a very different thing that Saturn and Aquarius, right? But Saturn in, in like the 12th is very much, you have to go within yourself and be alone to really kind of take, because we, we've kind of established the 12th house is very spongy. It's very absorbing of energies, right? And if you can just shut everyone out, be alone as a Saturn in the 12th house, you can really connect to your own divine essence and your own sort of like subconscious. And you can hear your own voice. You can hear your own authority. Because the 12th house Saturn is very much like you don't, you can't really access your authority. And, but that's because you're so overwhelmed with every one thing else. And it's, there's so much kind of blocking that in the sense of like, it's like a, it's like a mess in the back of your mind that you can't really clean up. But then once you sit with yourself and start kind of unraveling it, you know, then you're like, oh, okay, I do have authority. I can do this. Like I can hear my own voice. I can hear my own energy. I can feel what I need to do for my own you know, emotional needs or whatever it may be that Saturn, you know, Saturn is, you know, in a different sign, but in the 12th house, you know, uh, there's more to that, but yeah. yeah. And I guess in the 12th house is also like some people with this placement might have a victim-like mentality, you know, where they feel like everything is happening uh, to them because there are a lot of things happening in their life. That's true because it's like also connected to karma a bit because it's in the 12th Mm -hmm. house. But at the same time, like they really need to, see how to like why are these things happening like why why, what are they trying to teach me Mm -hmm. and then if they really tap into that energy like connected to the 12th house like they can totally help you know uh i want to say humanity like it's very great it's very powerful very powerful place and i think and i think similar to because Saturn always wants to see, to see the limits of like what we can do and i think Saturn and pisces or or, i'm sorry Saturn in the in the 12th is how Similar to, and this is kind of Saturn in, also, I think I said this about Saturn in the, Saturn in the eighth house, but it's like, how far deep can the rabbit hole go and how far down can I lose myself before I find myself? You know, there's a lot of that, like how, how deep, how deep do I have to go before I find my answers, right? Before I find my truth, right? There's a lot of that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow, we do we do have some questions in the q a if you want me to pull them up because there's some people that ask questions and i don't know i don't even know if they're still here but um we do have a q a going if you guys want to throw that in there because we're going to go to the q a now and just kind of 
now can open it up to a conversation. Um, unless you wanted to talk more about the side of the 12th house before we move on. Uh, no, no, no. That was... Wait. Okay. okay, so the first one is... Oh my gosh, okay. I don't know if they're... Okay, so we're going to do this one. What are the best, worst aspects you can have to have on Saturn? Um, I'm assuming have two Saturn, but yeah. Um, so... Uh, I don't, okay, I don't, go ahead, you can go. I don't really know how to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's such thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing. I'm like, I don't really know if there's like a, a really perfect, perfect way of, um, you know, uh, saying best or worst aspects. Um, I mean, I have, so I have a Venus Saturn trine just to kind of expose my chart. Um, but I have a Venus Saturn trine and even the, the trine is still restrictive. Because Saturn is going to restrict it no matter sure. kind of what it is. I mean, granted, it's less, I mean, obviously I don't have the square, so I don't know how it really meant, like felt. But even the trine, it's like, at least on my on my example, it's like, I've always known what I've wanted in a relationship. I've always known what kind of partner I've wanted. Um, and I just kind of don't allow people to kind of get, it, get within that if they don't meet those kind of criteria. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? Um, but even then, with it being a trine, it's still restrictive because it's Saturn. So I don't think Saturn is going to really, at best or worst, um, you could look at it if you do you know anything about um, like sect, um, not you, but I'm talking more supposed to this person, like sect in regards to like if you're a day chart or a night chart, if you're a day chart, Saturn's going to be more um, constructive versus if you're a night chart, Saturn's going to be more like restrictive or destructive. I don't like saying destructive, but the word um so if you're born and you have your son above the ascendant descendant line so in the 12th in the seventh to the 12th house you're a day chart versus if you have your son below which is in the first to the sixth you're a night chart so that might be able to help answer that question i don't know if you have anything else to say on that but that's kind of yeah it's like with trines and six styles it's more it's there's still the restriction there but it's more like you sort of use it uh, to know what you want, maybe you're mm -hmm. more disciplined in that sense. With like a dif more difficult aspects, like I also have my Saturn is opposing not my not node as well. So it's like I either yeah, like I'm either in uh, you know my mode when I'm like um, I don't know how to explain. Like I either go my not node is in the ninth house. So when I studied abroad, it's like I went for that North Node, right? But now I'm mm -hmm. in my hope now, so I'm in like my South Node energy. But at the same time, I just sort of have to like find a balance between that. So mm -hmm. it's always like you just have to find a way to work it in your benefit. And that's yeah, all. exactly. And I think, I mean, for you, for you, you have is Saturn conjunct your South Node then too? Yeah, yeah that's its own thing. That's I its do. own thing. I'll be talking about that in my next live because I'm doing a live with someone. We're talking about the nodes connection to the planet. So that's, that's one other thing. To talk about. Oh, but, um, cool. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, I mean, that's kind of right. I mean, you have Saturn opposite your Mars too. So I think that's its own, it, it's opposite your Mars, right? By yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's very, and Mars is conjunct my north node. So. Ooh, babe. Okay. I can, <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. We're not going to pour to your turn, but that's okay. fine. Um, we can. So yeah. the next question is, I have a Capricorn stellium Saturn Aquarius and currently in my Saturn return. Will I be hit harder by my Saturn return because I'm a stellium in Capricorn? Um, no. If anything, I think you're going to, you're going to, it's going to, I don't like saying harder. I don't like that word choice, but I think like you would get more, um, a lot more would be like shed and relief but also it depends on if um saturn is the in the sect in favor like i talked about which is where your sun's at day chart night chart because for me i'm a day chart so saturn is really constructive for me so a lot of stuff has been kind of falling together versus if i'm a night chart saturn is more destructive where things fall apart but then fall together so there's it kind of depends um so but i would say yes to that personally but um uh -huh. um Okay. I agree, yeah. Good you said. So, okay, I'm going to do this one. Um, what's the difference between Saturn and Saturn retrograde? Which I'm I'm surprised we didn't talk about that at all, but... We didn't talk about Saturn retrograde. I mean, I guess it's more, like, it's always about the energy being more inwardly felt. So I always feel like with Saturn retrograde, it's like, it's sort of... 
maybe if Saturn is direct in your chart, then it's more about how you can express your struggles and how to, you can use society and how you can use also your outside resources in order to tap into your and like get over that Saturn blockage. But if it's in mm -hmm. retrograde, I feel it's more like of your own uh, doing. It's like something that you just have to find within yourself even more, you know, and it's, it also shows that there's a lot of pressure you put on yourself as yeah. well, but it's also like you have to go through this by yourself, but you get like so much stronger through it and yeah. things like that. But it's very, it's felt very internally as well. Yeah. Um, and maybe not so much seen from outside. Like you might keep a lot of your struggles to yourself sometimes, but it's not like a bad placement to have or yeah no it's not i like yeah. i like i like saturn retrograde i mean i have all my planets direct which is really weird um but me too is, actually do you really oh wow okay this makes sense this is what i'm about i feel like that's rare though yeah I, I i heard that too and i was like oh okay whatever um but uh saturn retrograde um i find a lot of people a lot because a lot of my friends have saturn aries and a lot of them are saturn retrograde in aries and retrograde saturn um it it really any retrograde planet it's going to um only really give you what you really need um what's going to penetrate you and what you're going to really go for is really going to be like what you need to do like that's why during mercury retrograde which mm -hmm. we're currently kind of still in um you know we only really get the most pertinent and most important information so when you apply that to saturn energy it's like you're only going to learn the most important lessons and you're only going to really see the most prominent or most pivotal um restrictions that you have as it relates to your saturn versus saturn direct it's kind of like you're just kind of this is more of the energy of just kind of going and stumbling and falling and kind of learning while you're going Whereas retrograde is like you sit back and then what comes to you when you learn, you like really integrate it and it makes it a little bit easier to integrate. I actually prefer retrograde planets because it's easier to to integrate mm -hmm. because you're not just kind of like stumbling around in a sense. So that's what I would say with that. Mm, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. I think. Um it's uh I it's yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot of perspective. It's a twelfth house mercury thing. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um so day and night charts, as I said, it depends on where your sun is at in your chart. So if your sun is between the seventh house and the twelfth house, um, you are a day chart. If your sun is between the first house and the sixth house, you are a night chart. So it's more of a Hellenistic approach, but it just has to do with like how the planetary energies kind of work. Um, so I'm just asking that question. And then um, there are twelfth house Saturn's in Aquarius trying her, their Gemini Venus in the third house. What does that mean for purpose and career? So I don't know if you want to ask answer that. Third house in um, Aquarius. So 12, no, twelfth house Saturn in Aquarius trining Gemini Venus in the third. Oh, okay. Um. So I feel like that is also connected to intuition. Like that's the first thing that I'm thinking about, especially trusting your intuition while. Um, communicating things outwardly and because it's a trine it's like um there is there might be at the beginning a bit of restriction with communicating these things and a lot of things that are sort of like in your subconscious but then when you do tap into that it's like um it can be it can represent a gift that you have right with like maybe being a very spiritual person or maybe having some sort of gifts of that are connected also to being an artistic person and you do have to actually go for that spark and express those ideas as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, with that, with the trine with Venus that we kind of talked about, it's like really being clear on what you want when Saturn aspects Venus, it, it's very being clear on what you want. And with that aspect, you know, Gemini Venus of all of them, it is saying like, you know, be very clear on communicating that. Um, and also that Gemini Venus is in third. So it's even more accent accentuating that like kind of communication aspect. Um, and a lot of it is like unlearning the beliefs that you've kind of have self-imposed by society to kind of not be like, to not be weird and not be whatever and communicate, like just kind of let your freak flag fly and be weird. Like, that's really what I feel like. With that. <laughs> I think that's really what helps the purpose is kind of having your own like sort of um, authority through kind of isolating and letting go of everyone else's voices 
and saying, what do I believe? How do I fit into this? And that way, that's what I would say with that personally. Um, and then I'm going to do the Q and A ones and then we'll go. So I'm, I'm like trying, cause there's a Q and A and there's people in the actual chat. So I'm going to do the Q and A okay, cause I keep getting those. And then we're going to go back to the chat. So, um, the next one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, Oh, you can talk on this one. Here you go. <laughs> there you go. That's on Saturn in the fourth house in Aries. That's all you. Go ahead. Up your path. Come get water. Uh, wait, I cannot really see the question. Don't oh, yeah. like it. I cannot see it on the screen. Really? Okay. Yeah. It says um thoughts on Saturn in the fourth house. So you can only see the the chat. Can you see the chat? Uh, not even like the chat right now is. I mean, if I try to, like, go to it, it doesn't work. So I don't know why that's, that's weird. happening. Weird. We love a Mercury retrograde moment. Okay, it just says thoughts <laughs> on Saturn in the fourth house in Aries. Okay, um, Saturn fourth house Aries. Yeah, okay. that's, all, that's, that's all you. Um, right, so with Aries, we did talk that it's connected to um, going for your impulses, but then it's in the fourth house, so it's even more a bit restricted i feel like because the fourth house is a very like uh personal house and it's the house of family as well so it's going to be connected to family it's like maybe while growing up you had to um like you had to you had some restrictions connected to expressing your um identity and i feel like this uh can show up as just learning how to be independent and learning how to sort of like get away from your family and make your own way in life as well and maybe do it in such a way that you also sort of like um start being a leader or you know like also inspire others this feels like a really nice story of how you you know you sort of mm -hmm. like um get over your limits that were imposed on you and your family yeah i agree i agree i don't really have more to say on that i think you hit it right in the head and i'm like you have saturn aries so i know you know how that that works so i figured just you know do it to you and i think and i agree i think i think there is a lot of imposing from the family of you not being able to be an individual in the family and maybe your family was like you can't do that they don't believe in you they or they or there's like too much responsibility in the family where like they're almost sucking your ability to have your freedom um and it's a matter of like really being able to like assert that freedom and, and develop your own sense of autonomy, I think is a lot. Um, yeah, so there's, that's what I would say. Um, okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. How would you, okay, let's do the ones in here. So you can't see the chat or the Q and A. You can't see anything. I, I was seeing the chat, but now it's like, I mean, I just see like the last two things. And if I try to scroll up, I can't. Like, I see wow, the last two Wow, people. Instagram's got to get their, their their stuff together. It's just sad. But no, That's... really, they have a lot of bugs lately. They give yeah. them the real like that. Um, and then Saturn Aries, four degrees in the second house. Um, that was a question in the, not Q&A, a question in the chat. Um, I would say... Saturn and Aries is very just like being very purposeful with your energy. Second house is being purposeful with your resources. A lot of this, um, I would recommend rewatching this because we talk about a lot of this stuff throughout the course of it. So this is just like we're just kind of doing little Q and A here, but because we did talk about Saturn and Aries, we did talk about Saturn and second house. Um, so I would say. And also, things we said about Taurus can apply as well. Yeah, here. Saturn and Taurus can apply as well. So I think there's a lot of that. Um, but I would just say just going for what you want financially and knowing that you deserve more out of your life and having some sort of um, being okay to go after making more money. I guess that's what I would really say. You know? Yeah, for being assertive with that. Yeah, going after your desires. Um, and then live on your Saturn line, your Saturn dominant. Yeah, I, that's, that's, I'm sorry, that's rough. Um, and then let's see. Okay, there's. Oh, the live, the live will be saved. The live will be saved and reposted on my story, and then I'm sure you'll repost it. Um, okay, so we got, I think we have, like, what, a couple more questions? Like, three more questions? Four more questions. Okay, so how do I, okay, let's see if I can turn off this Q&A so we stop getting them. Um, okay, so this one is, how would you work with Leo Saturn in the fifth house? Um, so... so yeah, that's all about what we talked about with um, 
your creativity and your inner gifts and trusting your talents as well and expressing yourself but because it's like Saturn and Leo and it's also in the fifth house it's like so much of that energy there of like um really having to be confident in yourself and yeah. um can also be connected with children like we mentioned when we talked yeah. about the fifth house yeah I would well. definitely recommend considering you have Leo and fifth house Saturn I would recommend watching the live because they're like re-watching this when it's reposted because we talked about that quite extensively about like you know like really being in touch with your inner child being in touch with that energy um allowing your creativity to come out kind of in spurts in like a developmental way um and also being okay to have casual effects but also not like super he heavy on the um, worry or responsibility so kind of just like a lot of those things really? That's what I would say with that. So, um, okay, we got two, we have three more. Okay, so then um, thoughts about Saturn and Cancer in the 10th house, that's retrograde. Um, that sounds like, well, that sounds, that's, that just sounds like your mother imposed a lot of emotional <laughs> things on your career. That sounds like a lot of, like, more so, like, your family wants you to be a certain way and have a certain career and you're like you yeah there's a lot of like um, yeah there's a lot of that <laughs> i don't even feel like i need to go into that it's just like there's a lot yeah. of like your mother imposing restrictions on you and your career and then you not yeah a lot of self yeah that's a lot of, that's 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 uh, yeah <laughs> i'm thinking of healer like being a natural naturally born empath but sort of because you're that like it's like you internalize a lot of your um sensitivity as well yeah. you have to allow sensitivity to come out through your career like later on as you go about life and you could really do well in like anything that's connected to empathy or being there for others in your mm -hmm. career as well. yeah cancer and that's and that's more on like the cancer midheaven but yeah i definitely agree with that i think that's a lot and i think it's a matter of time until they understand how to manage their emotions on a public sphere and not have their family yeah. or their own, they're like, mm -hmm. this is very much like keeping like your personal and private life separate sort of thing. True. Um, and not letting like your baggage from home kind of affect your career. That's what I would say for that. Um, and then, oh, okay, what, okay this is weird. Oh, yeah, but, okay, never mind. It didn't share that one. But, mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, so, wow, all these Saturn and Cancer people. It says, um, I've been told my Saturn in the 12th house in Cancer can be a cause of depression. How can you give Saturn what it needs when it's in the 12th house? Um, isolate yourself. <laughs> uh, be okay with being alone. Be okay with being by yourself. Dealing with your emotions. Processing your emotions. Knowing that your emotions aren't going to kill you as a Saturn in Cancer. Because I feel like Saturn in any water sign, you just get so overwhelmed by emotion that you're like, like, you just, you just, freak out you know that's what i would say oh yeah i feel like also getting closer to people like connecting to people on you know deeper levels and allowing yourself to do that this is one way to really tap into that emotional mm -hmm. side of yourself from the 12th house and like we talked about spirituality and all those things um i don't know paying attention to your dreams uh and seeing if there's any symbolism there behind that and how it can help you as well yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think there's a lot, there's a lot of that. I don't know, let's see if that is. Yeah, that's it. That's the last of the question. Cause this last one won't, won't. Okay. I guess, I guess we could just talk about this. For some reason, this question isn't loading, but I guess this is a good thing to end on. Um, oh, I guess it did load. Okay. So it said, I saw an ad about Saturn conjunct the sun on February 4th. Um, and that's coming up in like literally in a couple days, like two days. And I think this is a good note to end on because we're kind of approaching this like Sun Saturn conjunction that only happens once a year, um, and kind of like just explaining what we're gonna see with that, and then kind of end it out on like kind of just like like a kind of summary of what we would say is like the best way to deal with Saturn energy, considering we're dealing with that conjunction, and then just like kind of end it there. I think would just be a nice little way to end it. So, um, so what do you think on the Sun Saturn conjunction by transit that's coming up? What is your uh um i mean it's an aquarius right so yeah. we have to take that into account um so i do think we might see some um 
I feel like this is, I mean, it's a lot connected to our ego, uh -huh. but sort of like, um, there's also like a Leo full moon coming okay. soon. So I feel like around this time, also with this conjunction, like it can be connected to like an ego death sort of in general. So it's like you sort of have to um, be, it's a lot about being responsible and it's a lot about like realizing where you stand and where other people stand and how you can just back down a little bit so you can, you know, think bigger and allow other people to also go in the right direction. And it's sort of like working together, I feel like, but it's, you know, since it's connected to the sun, it's like, it's also about how we can maybe personally, like on a personal level, what type of action we can take to mm -hmm. actually reach like a, a collective goal, you know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like 100%. What do you think? I agree. I think I think the Sun and Saturn conjunction is because, like you said, it is an Aquarius. So there is this like very um, sort of like collective need to kind of integrate ourselves into like this bigger group. And I think it's when the Sun and Saturn are together. Typically, they don't like each other, but it's a matter of seeing those limits of our expression. Um, and I think that that's a lot of what we're at is. Um, seeing that and I think with Sun and Saturn, it's kind of a somber, really depressing energy. Um, where it's really restrictive, and I think we're able to really see the limits of both what we can do as a society and both how what we can do individually can impact that society, or vice versa, how the society can impact us and how much we've given too much authority in that way, too, with the being an Aquarius. Um, and I think there's a lot of that. Um, and then it is kind of a very depressing energy, but I think it, it forces us to see our limits um, with that with that transit, which a depression isn't a bad thing because depression just means depressed. Like deep rest mm -hmm. literally is depressed. Um, <laughs> so it's like that energy a lot. Um, and as for it, like bringing accidents, which is what they had said in the, in the, in the question, I don't really see it that way. I mean, it can, but that's more of like Mars, Uranus, Mars, Saturn. But um, it, that's, I think mm -hmm. just with the sun, it's just a lot of us seeing ourselves very, in a very limited sense with the sun, Saturn. Yeah, maybe bringing delays would yeah. be something that might happen, but not accidents. Like yeah, um, yeah, like a very a very big delay and like or like a very big hard look, like a hard look at yourself, like a very hard look at yourself to be like, okay, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? How can I get better? How can I like? And it's very self focused. Even though it's Aquarius, it's still like the sun. So it's like, how can I do better? But then it's also like with groups too. So yeah, so. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 wow, that's a lot. We've talked we've talked about so much in this life. <laughs> okay. It's a good thing. It is. Right? It is. It's, yeah, it's You're, valuable. I know. My 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 Jupiter Mercury is like, oh my god, there was so much, and you're like, you're Saturn in the third and Capricorn Mercury is like. And it was good. Yeah. It was, it so was much good. Inform like it was informative, and that's what I love. <laughs> yeah, no, hundred percent, and that's why it was. Yeah, I I love having people that have Saturn Mercury aspects and like that sort of stuff because when I I need to have someone that I can talk to that's not just like ADD like me because I just go mm -hmm. all over the place and I'm like, yeah. I love this. This was so much fun. Um, yeah, me too. And I think, uh, yeah, I think honestly, well, if you just kind of want to just talk about like the best way that you feel like to work with Saturn just as an overarching thing because I know we went through every single sign um yep. but like kind of what you think and then I'll go over what I think and then we'll just kind of close it out and I think we'll be we good we'll be good so so I mean first of all I always I also have a reading on this it's called revolutionary reading and the way I you know approach Saturn is yeah. like I look at the problem which I think the problem is Saturn, but it's not the problem like on the long run. So we don't have to look at it like in a black and white way, but it's like Saturn is the problem. And then we look at aspects to Saturn, the sign Saturn is in, and also like the how Saturn is in to see how that problem manifests and how it manifested itself in your life until now, especially with aspects, we can get more deeper into that as well. Um, and then for like the solution, it's, I feel like it's a lot connected, connected to Capricorn and Aquarius, like I talked about before, you know, sort of like looking, uh, at the houses we have Capricorn and Aquarius in, 
um, and also maybe looking at Uranus and things like that. And I feel like if you feel like there's a restriction that you have with your Capricorn sign, if you just embrace the, um, I mean, it's not that simple, but you can, <laughs> you know, one way to do it, it's like you could embrace the themes of the house where you have Aquarius in, which it would be like your authenticity, and then embrace the themes of the house where you have Capricorn in. You don't necessarily need to have like Aquarius or Capricorn placements, but just mostly look at the rulers in like the house. Um, and then if you do embrace your authenticity with your discipline, which is like Capricorn, and you blend that together, that is sort of like one way that you can really tap into your uh, Saturn sign. Right, because yeah. both Aquarius and Capricorn are ruled by Saturn. So yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm like, I really want to get a Saturn uh, revolution reading from you because I think that would be so much fun. Because I love that you like, you like specialize in Saturn as a Capricorn rising, Mercury and Capricorn. Like, I'm just like, this is very Saturnian, and I'm just like, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's that's yeah, a lot of interesting. Also, like how people feel about their Saturn placement after the Saturn return, because I feel like the, the readings I do for people that are, didn't go through their Saturn return yet, it's like they are still in that sort of like restriction. But people that went, you know, like what happens after a Saturn return, you know, like no one talks about that. I know. So it's That's like, why, like it's, it's such a it's such a visceral feeling that like you <laughs> just can't like you really you can't like just like explain no. it and it's I've, I've said this to so many other people that haven't been there's had a return in, and it's like we can just conceptualize it until we get in it and then we're like oh that's what it is like for me it's like i had a concept of my saturn return going a certain way and then as soon pretty much as soon as saturn hit aquarius it's like oh here you go here's a lockdown here's some quarantine and i was like what? Yeah. so i think it's it's really it's something that you can conceptualize it all day and i did the same thing and i i have but it, it's something that you have to experience it. And I think that when you experience it, you're like, oh, now I get it, you know? And um, the Saturn return is, there's so many other things that go on around the Saturn return, but that's a whole different conversation, like transit-wise. But it's such a, Saturn energy is something that's so prominent in all of our lives because it has to do with like our our limits, right? And our, um, our limits as it relates to the sign, as it relates to the aspects, like you had said, you know? And I think, the reading that you that you do, I really want. I really it really interests me, and I think it's really cool. And I want to like. I think everyone that has Saturnian energy, which is literally everyone, um, should <laughs> be getting the reading like that because I don't think people realize the power of knowing your limits and the power of knowing like what restrictions you you've either placed on yourself, what restrictions, um, you know, the universe or whatever whatever way you want to look at it what restrictions you have in your life and how to best work within those those confines and those restrictions and i think saturn energy it does take time right obviously that's like the biggest the biggest part of it is taking the time with stuff yeah um, yeah a hundred percent and it's like even and being a capricorn rising we both probably have heard our so much in our life to be like just wait just just wait just keep just be patient and it's like no i don't want to be patient anymore you know and um and it's things get easier in time. And I think a lot of people, when they go through Saturn return or even before that, they're like, they don't see the hope, but there is hope. Um, and if you can just make it through your Saturn return and like the end of it, you'll be like, okay, there's a purpose for this, you know? And because Saturn wants you to see the purpose of what you've been through. Um, so going through a Saturn return is really, really prominent. And mastering the energy is just, it's something that you gotta, it's, it's, it's the lessons you gotta learn them. You gotta just go through them. You can't just like skip them. You know, Saturn will let you do that. So, um, it's a matter of doing that. Yeah, and then um, yeah, that was that was pretty much just the way I look at it. Um, and then, so this is a live that'll be saved. I don't know if you're. I don't know if you can post it on your. I know it's gonna be on my feed. I don't know if you can post it on yours, but I know you can post it on your story and stuff. Right. Um, yeah, I'm scared of my story. Um, and then the thing is, is like it's. You can rewatch it. You guys can review it because we go over every single Saturn placement, every single Saturn house placement, sign placement, how best to work with it, how we've seen it manifest. Yeah, we go through a lot. So, um, and obviously the Q and A was open. You guys had questions there that we answered. If you guys watched them earlier or were left, whatever, you can rewatch them. Um, and yeah, I think this was this was a lot, and this was so much fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it really was and I really love 
I just, I really like your energy. I'm really happy we got to finally go on live together. And I think it's really fun to like have a Saturn conversation with the Saturn Revolution Instagram page. You know, it's like a really like on brand <laughs> moment for. <laughs> Yeah, same. Also, like, we didn't really talk much before this, so it was, like, sort of, like, it's yeah. nice to get to know you, you know, know. like. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Your placements and stuff like that, like, yeah. Yeah, we should so definitely, we should definitely do a, this We should definitely do a, a, a swap, like, outside of live. For um, sure, yeah. I'd I, love think that, to. I think that'd be really cool just to, like, talk about, um, like, get your revolution rating and kind of have you read my chart and vice versa, because I think there's a lot, um, obviously to learn from everyone else in the community. And I think it's such a powerful thing. And I think it's just so cool to collaborate with other astrologers and just see how their perspectives are and things. And um, yeah, so we should definitely set something up obviously privately and do that. But um, yeah, that was um, pretty much it. I think this this was a long live. It was like two and a half hours. I have no idea what that is. It was a long time. Yeah, you're probably good. You're probably <laughs> tired. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, I enjoyed it, of course. Yeah, it was so we, nice. Yeah, we can definitely we can definitely just do something like this again. I don't know what we would talk about. But I'm sure we can find we something. We can find something. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we can. Um yeah. but yeah, just um Perfect. yeah, thank thank you guys for being here. Thank you, obviously, yeah. for coming on with me, Larissa. Um yeah, and I think yeah, I think that's it for me, unless you have any more parting words. Do you have anything else you want to say before I close it? Uh not really, just like, yeah, I hope more people are going to watch the live because it's a lot of value for information, like we said. And it's really nice to sort of, like, get the perspective, like, an outward perspective of someone on your placements as well. So this is, like, a good opportunity to do that as well. So. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot There's a lot of learning opportunity from this live. There's a lot of value put into this. And I think it was really enjoyable, and I loved it. And I love the fact that it's saved now so that you can, like, see it forever. And it's, like, such a nice thing to re-reference. So. Yeah, and I... And I feel like the fact that it lasted a long time is so Saturn, you know, energy. I know, I know. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, it's such a Saturnian thing for us to be like, oh, we have no time of it, but let's just talk about Saturn of all placements. And then it goes on for like two and a yeah. half hours. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Um, but yeah, so I guess I, at that point, um, Saturn does have things go to an end at some point. Um and so I think that a good, that's a good place to end it. But I, I just really, I'm really grateful for you. I think this was a great time and I'm looking forward to getting more from you, working more with you, talking to you. And yeah, and I think it's just great. So thank you um, for being thank here. You. Thank you for everyone that came. And then, yeah, and then I'll, I'll see you when thank I see you. you. I'll see you. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.